Wonderful. Thank you. That's so me and my rudimentary way of learning how to do very basic things on a computer can sync <laughs> audio and video. Otherwise, I am an idiot. Uh, and I have a very hard time even getting the last episode out on YouTube. So, uh, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, we'll work it out. We're, we have a lot of things to do it as well. It was one of my weaker episodes anyway. I thought, you know, I didn't deliver the right energy. Uh, I didn't deliver the right energy. But the man who always does deliver the right energy, uh, our second player guest of all time, uh, I don't know how many episodes. This is our 35th episode. 35th. So we've uh, done at least an episode every week for 35 consecutive weeks. And you're our second player in that time. How That's does that make you feel? <laughs> make me feel very important. Yeah. Is it better? <laughs> That's true. Which one? Better than Katowice, Cologne, or the Major? Like, which one of the three does it feel better Fourth. than? Uh, uh, yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. I see that right there. Uh, yeah, no, Finn, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank, thank you for coming on and, and talking counter. Uh, what a great name for a show, I will say. What an amazing <laughs> name for a show. Uh, but we, you're filling the, the boots this week of Jason Moses O'Toole, uh, who can't be with us because he decided to have a child. Decisions and priority, huh? Right, he's being very selfish about yeah. things. Do you feel the same way about Rain having to take an event off? Mate, you're a dad. You can't be taking time off. We're playing Counter-Strike here. I, I think he's doing good so far, actually, coming mm -hmm. back. Um, I think he's happy to be on the tournament and playing. Oh, yeah, so we yeah. can get some sleep? Yeah. We always have that joke with Natsu. <laughs> yeah. That's the same joke we have, like, because, like, Natsu, every time he would come to an event and we'd see him, he'd, he'd be loving it because it's like, I actually get some sleep. Natsu's got a bunch of kids as well, right? Speaking of, your, you know, one of your boys, his oh, twists, yeah. he came and joined us today for the first series, I think yeah. it was. Yeah, some, some, one of the rooster maps. Uh, and then I guess he went and pracked, and now he's there and you're here. Yeah. So I don't know who got the better end of the deal. Um, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I suppose we won't hear, uh, yeah. but we'll see how he does here. It's, Are it's, you a little bit afraid? Um, because he was also there for the playoffs of Katowice, right? A couple of times. Now he's like volunteering here. You know, you think he's liking it a little bit too much? I think it's good. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's good to make some extra content. I think um, he has a good personality for that as well. And uh, obviously being one of the most decorated players, so it's good he's trying to push it a little bit further. Uh, the one thing I noticed, and I was, well, today, so this is the thing, everybody talks about Counter-Strike a little bit differently, because the way that you view the game is unique to how you've learned the game, and that's who you're inspired by in, in different ways, and I was talking to him about, like, he was obviously saying, oh, yeah, this, and I think they reacted like this because of this, and I'm just, I asked him, I was like, so in your team, you know, how much theory do you sit and talk, and he was like, well, we have everybody on the team who's very, very experienced, so we don't really need to talk about certain decisions and whatnot, so I'm curious at, like, where that stops, Right, because there's a certain point at that, like in your team, you have to talk about theory stuff. Like, okay, we're going to do this move, and this is the spacing we want. But there must be like an already understood baseline. So, like that, wh where's that baseline? I think it's very hard. I think uh, for me, I've been very open towards everything. Um, but also, when I see that we are not playing on, like, in good mid round situation, not playing off each other. Um, so this period of time, uh, this last month, I tried to bring more structure than I've done with this team before. Okay. Because for me, I always need to see every player in the natural habitat. The meaning when they're joining, I need to see how they play, how they view the game, uh, who's playing good with each other in clutches, who is not good with the clutches with each other, the way they communicate and move, you know. And I think we kind of lack that structure now when individuals are playing less good, I think. Sure. Um, and that had put a lot of pressure on me the last few months to do a lot of good mid-run calls and less focus on my individual game. So by adding structure now, you are going back to the, what we call the basics, right? Try to take a step back and then still have this free flow of playing. And, and that's why maybe there's smaller details now we talked about, which we didn't talk about in the beginning, because mm. I need to see how people actually view the game with adding rubs because that that's another dimension to every single player in the team is there a point where that like creativity stops because you see when a player is in the habitat of the team how they're going to react and how they're going to play but then eventually you're only playing with the same individuals all the time so the creativity of the way that you approach the game needs to come from somewhere right you need to get inspired with the new ideas you need to make sure that you're still looking at what other teams are doing and bringing that into your own game so like that must be one of the hardest things because when you're winning you're using the same moves and it's working and working and working until one day maybe th three out of the five moves you have in a particular position stops working and that's like you in a game you're fucked if that happens right so that where, where does this creativity to keep coming up with stuff come from is it taking from the past is it just copying from other teams now it, it feels like because the meta is always evolving 
Okay. Yeah, for, for me, I've always tried to build up, like you do two default smokes, but in my brain, I have eight different variations and maybe you only went through three of the rounds. Mm. So when I make a tactic, I always make sure there is an end goal in every single situation we're ending in, meaning I can go through one strat, but I already in practice without going through it, I'm changing one or two roll on the fly to create a whole new tactic. So it's so a dynamic you see that your I, players might not, but they're yeah, going to take exactly. They will okay. just understand what I'm doing specific in the A split, but I will have an A split version three already, okay. which I'll suddenly take out on tactical time, but at an event when I feel like this we need to go through right now to to win the game. Um, so for me, I've always tried to be creative, like before I need the creativity, mm. creativity. But sometimes when you're deep in the game, I forget this strat because it's not really written down in the playbook. It's in my in my brain and mm. it will pop up. Um, so that's what I'm trying always to be very creative and by taking a step back now and doing more basic stuff for the team, like basically we have an EG default. Uh, it sounds very funny, but if you watch the EG demos, mm. the players actually have a good structure, but they have a bad in ending in the rounds. Mm. So what they're doing, they're using less utility mm. to take map control, but in a very structured way. So every time I watch the demo two times, three times three different games and it did exactly the same thing but had a bad end goal so we tried to take a step back to have that so i have more opportunities mid rounds and mm. i think that have helped some of the players to find a new rhythm uh, a new like space in the default where most of it was based off me and rain taking a lot of aggressive map control and then we have a good ending in the player so I'm trying to always be creative. That's basically my job. That's the best PR EG's gotten in months right there. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, but, I mean, to be fair, we also gave him some praise. Yeah, we thought even, they were playing. Even at the play-in, right? Like, yeah. it's, you know, there's good things there. It's just they seem to fall apart mm. towards the end, even rounds, games, whatnot. But actually, Finn, I'm happy you're here. Now, I, I floated this a couple of episodes ago. I said... Because when I interviewed you or we talked to you at some tournament, you said you don't feel like you're missing that 5%, 10% that you had at the first half of last year. So I had an idea for getting like oh, 5%. Shit. Yeah, you right? said you were going to bring this up. Yeah, yeah so, okay. so here, here's what my idea was. My idea was to bring all of in as a sort of an assistant coach, right? Where he doesn't have to be there like full time every practice. You know, obviously he has to be there every now and then. But just a guy who I'm sure you know right you've played with him i've also been on the team with him he's a guy who has incredible sense for the game right really really good ideas there was on every map there was an all of strat which you know was only saved for crucial rounds and, and worked every time and also he's you know a fun guy to be around right like when there's when he can just chill and you know him obviously very well rain brocky and he's played with you guys even as a standing here yeah. so everyone on the team is pretty much familiar with him like could help a little bit in terms of vibes you know you can get i know robin is a great guy for that but it's still when it's the same six seven group it gets maybe a little bit monotonous right so what but do we're you living about? in a universe where olaf would say yes yeah where he would be okay yeah. with that and that would be like a level of involvement that he's comfortable with what do you think about that do you like that idea or you think it's <clears throat> horrible I, th I think it can add something. My problem is always adding a player that has played before. Um, how are they going to act in, in the teaching role compared to when they're playing? Mm. But it's like, for me, I have no idea how I'm going to be like a coach. I have an idea of what I could bring to a team, what I would do, what my strengths would be. But I also know what I'm most known for is my mid round calling. Sure. And I would not be able to teach that. I would only be able to guide that. And for me, Olaf has always been a feeling player. Mm -hmm. Like he sees something, he goes for it, goes for it, goes for it. That's what he's best so at. Instinct. And he instinct, yeah. right? And how are you going to teach that to other players? But I agree that there's always good to have another perspective on things. Coming in from the outside, seeing how we're playing, how we practice. So yeah, I always think a new guy can bring something. That's why I also believe that sports psychologists can add something. True. A new analyst, um, a new coach can always add something. But I, I think... Depends on where Olof would be in that teaching role. Would he be willing to like spend time and talk with players? Then I think he would add anything to any team, even us. Yeah, because you know I was thinking about it, and you guys were in a very weird situation towards the end of last year, start of this year. Like you weren't playing bad CS, you were playing good CS, and you lost a couple of close games, like in playoffs, right? Like where it's you didn't play bad in them, sure. If you if if a one or two players had a couple of rounds that they would that they did have in the first half of the year, right, that could turn the tide. So 
obviously you're there to win titles yeah. you know so so it's like a very weird balance between well we're not playing bad but we're also not winning tournaments so something is missing so how do you like how how did did, did did you have the same feeling? How do you sort of approach that? How do you tackle that issue? I think um, <clears throat> obviously the first bad result we had was Rio, right? It was a step back and I, I was like, we have to shake this off, you know? Like mm. this can happen to any team that you really screw up. Uh, we played the two of the best teams in the world and best of one, uh, who's not just like we come in 24 <laughs> hours before. So obviously that one didn't really affect me and the way I think uh, where we're going as team. But then we lost to Cloud9, where Exile had 1.5 rating. Of in, course, in, it's always in Exile. Playoff, it's always Exile. In Pro League. And then I was like, okay, this is now we need to kind of, we need to gain some momentum again. We need to make sure we didn't overthink stuff yet. And then we lost to Heroic 16 14, uh, or what time coming yeah. in, in Mirage in the final. So for me, the, the ending of the year, we had the right trajectory coming back from Rio. And I don't think many teams would respond like, like we did. Because we were in the final, we lost to G2 in, in Abu Dhabi, where we beat them the first game, losing the semi final. Um, so Katowice was like kind of a little alarming for me, the way we lost to Liquid. Uh, we lost mm. because of our CT size the last two maps. Mm. And that was like the first time I've seen, okay, is it because we haven't gone through enough on the CT sides? We don't have enough setups. Um, so we went back to add some more setups. And me and Robin has always been on the same page. Don't overthink stuff unless mm. it's like, okay, do we need to change roles, positions? Uh, so what we did is change one position on one map, and that's the first time we ever changed since this lineup started. Mm. Wow. And that's like, we believe so much in the style and the roles, but it's good to have this refreshment on, on a new map where you change the role. Um, so that's what we're doing right now, but we don't want to change the way we see the game. Um, we're obviously updating our playbook. I'm looking at how the meta is evolving. And when I see G2 play, I feel like it's just better players than us right now in the same, the style. same style yeah so yeah. it's not like we are out of the game and that's why i feel like it's very hard not to overthink mm. and that's why i think like you can you can add a new perspective to to the team but it's also very dangerous to change the role right now um unless we were like number 15 in the world and it yeah. looks like really bad no i i agree with it 100 yeah. percent, right but it's difficult to have that still the faith and the poise yeah. and i mean you look at it you lost to g2 twice heroic like those are Two yeah. teams that are yeah. playing the best CS right now as well. And then the Liquid one was really the one that sort of... But I remember that Mirage game. It was Mirage was decider. And you played CT side and you had no money almost like for the whole half. Like you lost some crucial rounds and then it was uh, this way, that way. And I think probably for you guys as you were playing, I mean, as you were re-watching, it's like, wow, we how did we not have money this whole <laughs> yeah. half? And it obviously changes the way you play. And Liquid was, you know did enough really to beat you. So yeah, it's been some tough draws too. I'm just thinking what you said right there, right about the details of the half. And this is kind of taken away from you for a second. This is kind of just talking about Counter-Strike and the way that we do our job, Yanko, right? Like the, those rounds, because we all know when we play Counter-Strike, how those rounds feel. You're uncomfortable. You don't have as much utility. You're unable to delay them for as long. You need to now be more reliant on your aim, right? Or your positioning or some type of a move or a setup. And it's really hard to convey that to a viewer. I was just thinking about that. And as you were saying, like rounds where there's, there's low on cash, like we can go, oh yeah, their money fucked or they have a lighter buy. When I'm sitting there and saying, yeah, they only have, they only have two smokes and three Molotovs. Like, I feel like there's got to be a better way that I can translate that for people to say, hey, they've earned this, I guess I need to fit, follow that up with this limits their options. There's less moves available to them here. They can get, you know, there needs to be a way that I can make people feel that this is now a lesser scenario because we seem to just treat gun rounds like all gun rounds are the same. And in Counter Strike now, that's not the case. <laughs> like, wow. there's so many variations of rounds now. It's fucked in yeah, a good way. Yeah, but that's also what, when I cast it out there, I tried to really emphasize on them not having an orb, how you would play the round, but also when you have low utility on orb pass, you would then walk mid if you didn't explode monster. So all that, I tried to like pre-call as that's what you normally would do because yeah. if you don't have full utility on orb pass, you're not going to take map control. You have to do some kind of walking, fast B execute with simple, simple stuff, you know? Yeah. So I think that's the way you can kind of relay it, that something rather fast should happen or very explosive round in that sense that that's the only way you're going to win a round if you win it within the first 30 seconds of the of the round because if you play the late round you don't utility you're fucked you are literally getting outplayed yeah 
And I think that's to tie in to what both of you said. That's the difficult part. Even I'm loving this casting that I do at Pro League. It's better it's super, to analyze live, right? Because it's, yeah, it's basically man. doing analysis live and it's super chill. And I feel like the games are way more interesting that way. But um, that's the most difficult thing about the economy that I'm like always struggling. I always feel like I don't get this point across well. It's it doesn't, like, it feels dire when, when, when you you're in have the like server. a mixed buy. Like you have a, you don't have an ideal buy, let's say your CT, right? You, that means in freeze time, you're at a disadvantage. So you probably, against a really good team, you have to take some sort of a risk. You need, you know, if you have an MP9, maybe you need to take a, a faster banana take on Inferno, right? But here's the thing that I have problems getting across. That makes it easier for the T's. Yeah, to understand right? what's going to happen. So if yeah. you're a good T, if you're a good in-game leader, you'll be aware of that. And then it gives you more options, right? So you can just, you don't need to do anything special if you if this is a team that likes doing aggressive moves in these in these rounds, you just have a good, def, you know, default where you can punish that, mm -hmm. and the kills come to you, yeah, it, and you're five v three, and it's a much easier round, right? And you don't want to, and that's good Counter Strike from the CTs. You can't just play it really default if yeah. you have like weaker weaponry. I mean, you can. That's like really mind games on mind <laughs> games when it comes to tier one teams, right? But in general, so that's why you know uh, Finn said about overpass, you know, and that's when you know the T's have a bad buy. And let's say you open 3A as CT, like that's you calling for something bad to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the one easy thing that they can do Finish B. is yeah. the fast B, like yeah. some sort of either full the, the way back that people call Astralis for ages, like they had the set nades with the pistols from water and whatnot, but there's now different, different variations, variations yeah. of it, right? So that's why you see a lot of teams when they know, when they think the T's could buy and it's going to be a bad buy to reset and they open 4B because that's the fastest way for you to lose around the CT. So when you see the CTs open weak B against that buy, you're like, but this is not necessary. Like you're trying to maybe be too smart and like, oh, so they're going to think, we're going to think and then you go away and they just go B and you know, your B player straight two for three, but then it's a 2v3 retake and they got but the guns, they get an op and all of a sudden you're wrecked. That's why a like, team like Heroic right now is really scary in a lot of those situations where they don't have a lot, right? Because when you look at teams now who are, who are good, they have to, you have to be able to get a round in where you have one AK and a Deagle and you have to be able to apply pressure. Like a fill in those rounds now, it's really important to get three kills, which is more outside of the box. You don't know where that fight's going to come. It's not the regular puzzle solving that you're talking about because that is the more regular puzzle solving right and then you have these like meta breakers who are trying to do things a little bit different furia well we know they're just going to pressure pretty heavy and try and finish somewhere together right nuke it's always going to be fucking top site and when they try and go yard they miss the wall smoke <laughs> they, they, it has to be on purpose at this point i cannot believe they came not, on the couch and they said yeah. it wasn't <laughs> could we yeah. we big them up this even dumb. said drop said like we were listening to you guys and you were saying like oh they maybe did this on purpose and they're like we're just like because we always want <laughs> to give teams benefit of oh it's like that oh so they think that and yeah. no we just <laughs> we, we, we try just and build that story up yeah. right we try and give them something but then like i guess like the flip side of what you're talking about is is the heroic situation where they make the lower things work with the expectation of what the cts are likely to do right let's just like this constant game like of like I think, I think it's really hard for us to ever illuminate that because we're making some broad assumptions. And if you just do things by like the book, what makes the most sense? It's hard for us to then explain away the things that shouldn't work or the percentage, the, the, the lower percentage plays that teams go for that they make work. Oh, oh, wow, that's the behind. Sorry, boys. I'm slightly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, no, for me, it's like there's a correct way to play Counter Strike, and you need to start with that. Right. That's what Greyhound are doing. This is actually where I wanted to get with this point. All right. Right. So long story short here, at the moment, Counter Strike is like very default heavy, right? It's like dominated by teams who can do the default and then solve the jigsaw puzzle in the same way we're talking about now. You know, this is their setup, this is the most the best move, right? So Greyhound have gone from being this team who would have a little bit of everything. They default, but they do set pieces, and then it didn't feel like they understood when they wanted to use them, to now just being like really quite slow and using the information that comes their way, and they're happy to finish late. Like that's what it looks like this team has brought into this yes. event. That's what, that is where, and I would love to get the room's opinion, where I think all teams need to start. IHC is another example. Then you can build your game on top of that. Once everyone understands how to get from A to Z in the default game, then you can build the rest of your game on top of that. Until then, I think it's, it's up to people to be puppet masters as in-game leaders, and that's too fucking hard. I don't think you can have everybody puppet master at Tier 1 Counter-Strike anymore. I disagree uh, for, this, for the simple reason that to be able to play default and play at 12, you need to have players who are... Exactly, exactly. That's, who, but that's what I'm saying. Who have good games. And so I think probably at the start, as you're figuring it out, you do have a little bit more set pieces. Like look at Ants last year. 
first well, half was, of the year. Yeah, right? Like really they understood fast. they don't have the players for it, so they were calling more from spawn, and it worked for them. They wouldn't have had the same success if they played they were like the a second default best heavy team style. to phase at that time of the year. Yeah, exactly, right? At some point. Um, yeah. and, and then they realized, okay, we, this is not consistent. And once they had to change players, they changed the style as well. And of course, it's a struggle, but they've had some good results and whatnot. So I, I agree that ultimately that's the goal, but that you should do that from the start. It can be difficult. Of course, there's G Cloud9, who was Gambit youngster. So they were an academy team and they were playing already that style. So if you have the players for it and a coaching staff that can really, you know, teach them how to do it and, and, and you're hard at it, yes, but that could be the, the harder way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it also depends, right? Like, I thought about what would happen if you play a little bit slower, you know, like like playing a little more basics, taking a little more map control. But what often happens with our team if we're playing very slow is that we have me and Rain, who's really aggressive, and we have the rest of the guys really playing slow CS, right? So the slower we would play, the less option Rubs and Tristan broke, you would have time to win the round and clutches and play the mid rounds. So that's some, something where I tried, like some of the players want to play a little bit slower and I said, we can do it. But the problem is we limit the time of how we're playing and how we are creating space because me and Rain is so many used to in this year to take the map control pretty fast and then I have time to do mid round calls, uh, manipulate the rotations. But the slower we play, the less map control I have the less options I see in my, my screen, right? So the information I would need would have to be really good and not a, like a, a guessing question, you know? Um, so that's some of the things we also looked into. Uh, and I think we can play slow. Um, but I also think the way we played very explosive and then played the mid rounds is where we really see how good Brokey Tristan Rups is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a balance you have to find with the team. You have to find the philosophy, right? And I always believe if you play slow a lot um you get too readable but you have to have players who's really good with 30 seconds left to take the right decision yeah. at the right moment and some players are not good, good at taking those decisions and then have and the balls to make them yeah the, so you can do it in practice and i think that's what gambit uh cloud nine had to experience over time with lan they would be good on lan but they would be 99 percent of what they were online and that was that decision that 1% comes really in at 30 seconds left. Sure, if you are yeah. thinking five seconds, should we go A or B? You'll do that on land in, instead of online or in practice. And I sure. think that's what now Cloud9 is struggling. But they also, they were so good uh, online that they were still good on land, but not the same percentage they needed online. Uh, sure, that's interesting. Land. That's interesting because, yeah. No, I, I was going to say, I love that point with the time because a 3v3 with one minute left on the clock it's yeah. not the same as a 3v3 with 30 seconds left yeah. on the clock. And I try to, you know, with, with in-game leaders, like, that I co when I coach, I try to explain, look at time the same as you look at health, utility left, and the, the, the player, the number situation, right? Like, time can be your ally in a round. Like, if there's a lot of time and you have, you can just wait, right? Like, sometimes you wait, people come to you, frags come to you, you know? So that's a big factor. I think sometimes teams neglect, right? Like, they just get a good trade they see a name and this you know sometimes the best decision is to just speed up and end the round but i think there's not some people are like still unaware of you know how to handle the time and how to work around it how to use it to your advantage i think it's like the younger players right making the decisions in in the lower time is is probably key right that's where you expect mm -hmm. them to be over peaking an angle or yeah. you know maybe rushing something when even if there is 15 seconds left, they didn't have to rush that peak. Like they were the third person to peak in that situation and they went first, right? That You see flustered plays happen all the time. It is just curious. I imagine practicing like Gambit did, right? Condition them for this land environment. Then that's where the nerves and the experience of being a land player comes into play. But for Heroic, theirs is the same thing, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's they're reacting so quickly and to so much that... They have to make sure that those fast decisions don't just snowball out of control, right? They want to kind of reel it in at the right moment. Whereas the other, t whereas the gambit style needs to put their foot on the gas at the right moment, and the heroic style needs to reel it in at the right moment to make both of their styles kind of work. And it's really, I guess, it's so unique here because we're talking, we're talking Counter Strike, right? At the at the X's and the O's level of like decision making, and this is the identity of in-game leaders who build out teams and coaches who build out teams. But this is the details that we have a really hard time explaining on a broadcast in a succinct way. Mm -hmm. 
because it's, it's so unique to explain the identity of a player or a team in a decision when you know we don't have any tools to re- we can only use our periphery and the best decision is available there i wish we had a better fucking way of it i guess just talking more to you guys is the best way to do that i, I think so but, but i also think stats only shows what you see on paper sure but some of the decisions and like when i look at how many opening duels i take I feel like many of them is also when I have eco, you know? Okay. Uh, so yeah, like yeah. when you look at the stats, I also they always get inflated in some way and it's always hard to take out some part of that, right? So I, I think, like you said, the only way you can look is watching a lot of Counter-Strike uh, and using your eye test of how you feel this guy is calling. Mm. Uh, the same thing, like I guess there were some things about Art and how he controls the team. Yeah, right? Yanko is dumb. <laughs> yeah. uh. You know, like... Uh, that's the way like the team is playing and i guess they all believe and that's the right way to make everyone play the best right and but you know like there's always a flip coin is it the code saying no no we keep playing artist the best when he's playing this way or i think every player has to ask questions to themselves i have done this many times in my career am i doing the right thing what is other in-game leaders doing right uh, where i'm doing something wrong is it me is it someone else you know like um, but how do you do that from tournament to tournament when do you find the time <laughs> to ask yourself that question because you're bang on I-, I wish i had that moment in my career because the way that i played counter-strike in 2015 was we're an underdog team bang we can do some set pieces that i've cooked up in my fucking lab and i can run these strats and i know i know that i can get us off to a good start because if we win the pistol, we win the first gun round, we're already fucking five rounds up. And I know, like, I can snowball a couple more. Mm. But, you know, I never, I never had the time, and this is probably a reflection on me not being introspective enough as a human being, but I never took the time to sit here and go, fuck, like, what am I, how am I so off the pace? Because I, I talk about myself as being shit at Counter-Strike, right? But I look back, like, I, I wasn't terrible. Like, I wasn't a good player. I, I don't think I'm, like, any of these fucking gangsters out there who know how to... <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think I was mechanically... But I think, like, as an in-game leader, I think I was all right. Like, I had some pretty good ideas. But I think, on reflection now, when I go back, I was like, fuck, I sucked at calling us into defaults and mid-rounds. And, like, I was good at, like, momentum calling, mm. right? But I never took the time at the time to see where I was weak. So how do you... How do you? I, I imagine have you 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 would have to have done that in your career at some point. Ask yourself the question of you know where do I go next? I do that often. I, I think self reflection is the most important piece of my career and where mm. I am. It's like always be reflective. I think I always bring up this example of Bumas when he joined the uh, Mouse, and I saw how how he did spray transfers. I was like, I've never seen this in my life. So I asked a seventy year old kid, "How are you training this?" And he told me on aim butts. So I went on doing that for two weeks and training and suddenly in a 13 13 round i do a spray transfer i've never done in my career before <laughs> okay now so yeah, i think okay. i think what i adopted early was from kobe like be a sponge i think everyone who is a tier one player has done something right to get where they are hmm. but they have maybe not done everything right but they're doing one thing right and if you ask the right question to this player you get to know how he became one of the best players in the world and you're like okay interesting how he practiced the way he see the game the way he thinks about teammates, uh, you know. Um, so for me, that that has been a part and part of my career. And I think the Astralis part of my uh, career was the, um, a big way of me under- being understanding to be self-reflective, you know. Okay. Because they were right in what they were saying about the structure, how they should play. But I also were right in the way I see the game, the wish and my strengths as a caller, all that kind of stuff, mm. you know. And I think over the years we've seen that both styles can win a major, can win big tournaments. Um, so for me, that was a big part of being self-reflective and being there before someone else tell you doing something wrong. Mm. So I always try to correct myself, and and sometimes I have bad thoughts. I like I'm talking myself down when I shouldn't, but that's something I had to learn the last two years to be listening and be more positive in my inner voice like okay there's a bad tournament you didn't do the right calls okay was I not in the zone ask critical questions of myself where were how did I sleep the day before okay everything was good I just had a bad day then you know like asking this question myself made me realize it's much more than just aiming in the server sure like uh, there has to be other things that affect your gameplay on, on, on the day that you lost and and that right there I think that ties back into why players want to have a solid foundation in life in terms of being at home a certain amount of time and having things regulated and that right there is the penny just dropping for me (laughs) no because like i think about it and i think about like the life we live in a hotel in vegas yeah (laughs) like there was nothing there there was only questions of what the fuck was at no point 
have I ever just thought what Finn's just thought in the sense of, did I sleep well yesterday? Did I, did I eat enough? Oh, I did. Yeah, no, it was just, it was just me that we, I've never sat there. I've never asked myself that question before and thought about like, did I get eight hours sleep? Do I have a good diet? You know that like, did I drink enough water? Like, like I just kind of exist like this fucking blob. I, trust me, I've done the same. I, I think in 2019, I started really thinking about what I want to do in my life, like what I want to do in CS, uh, where I want to be, how I'm going to improve. If I have to stay on top, I have to be strong mentality, mm. you know? And when I think about back in Boston, 2017, when Nico joined, everything, I was like, I was just chilling. 2015, I wasn't even playing so seriously but winning tournaments. And I, f I just think with how CS go evolved over the, the last few years and during COVID, I really needed to re energize myself re-innovate innovate myself because i saw all my peers mm. they were dropping from all the teams yeah. and i'm like mm -hmm. if i'm next then i need to make sure i give everything i have right now at this moment to understand that every single day i wake up now i need to fight to be on top of my career yeah. else i just stop you know well, that's the modern game right you have to because all the the young guns they are gonna, they are better than me in many part of the game but if if I'm the smartest, I know these percentages will play into my advantage yeah. in many of the situations and, and in the in the arenas and stuff like that, you know? So I'm trying to appreciate every single minute of CS now because that word I didn't didn't exist for me in 2018. I was yeah. just playing, living life, chilling, like not thinking about CS, not prepping hard, I didn't yeah. have structure. And, and, and now I just uh, appreciate every single moment. When we go, even go here to melt off stage, I try to remind myself this is part of winning the trophy and not just mm. when you're in the arena. So sure. I always try to make sure that every game counts as much as possible. But it is hard in theory to do it all the time, but I'm trying my best. That's like, you think about this. The one thing the kids can do is grind a shitload of hours. The one thing the kids can't do is have the fucking mega long experienced career that this guy has and players like him, right? So if you're trying to your best to keep up with, with there's no way that we can sit there and put in fucking 14 hours a day of just back-to-back oh, -back face at plugs <laughs> of pugs, like actual slugs, right? I love yeah. the fact these kids can still mm. do that shit, but you, you can't keep up with, but you can do a routine. You can keep your aim in point. You can watch some demos. You can keep it fresh in a different way, which should be looked at as like a real positive fucking experience. I mean, that's normal. We had Nico here who was sitting and we were talking about Monesi and he says, it's insane how much he yeah. can play, just face it or whatever. And Nico said, you know, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I can't play that much CS. I, I don't enjoy it. I feel like, you know, probably hurting my game at that point, right? Like, I'm just, I just can't do it anymore. And, you know, I envy him a little bit yeah. because of the fire he has, but that's normal, you know? Like, well, everyone life, at yeah. Monesi's age, we were all glued to the screen yeah, for 14 else. hours, right? You were just, like, living, breathing, thinking CS, right? You, you, you played for eight hours, pugs, you go to bed and you're thinking about ah, like that. this could be a really cool strat that we could do next time or, yeah. or whatever. So, but I think what, what you have and then what you're doing that a lot of other pros who are similar and that are starting to get up there in age don't do, they don't do the mental exercises yeah. that you do. Like they don't have the awareness of, okay, you know, I don't have that same fire. That's okay. But what's going to drive me now? You know, I need to have something to motivate me if I still really truly want to compete at a tier one level. So. That's the key. You just said the key. Truly, <laughs> Truly. wanting to compete at the mm -hmm. tier one level. Because look, there's accomplishments for everybody that are different. There's the best accomplishments in the world. That's winning a major, right? Winning the best. The, the best thing you can do in Counter-Strike is win a major. Then what's the best thing you can do after that? Win a second major. And after that, <laughs> a third. And after that, a fourth. As many as you possibly fucking can until you hold all of those Pokemon badges in your hand and you've gone, this is my career, right? That's probably the best thing you can do in all of CS. Outside of that, but other people have different goals. Like for a region that is small, winning you know, a game against a big established team, that's probably a goal. And if they achieve that, or there's maybe some pros who can only get to a certain point where it's like, yeah, we attended a pro league or we attended a major. And that's probably the best that they will ever achieve, right? But there are certain people and players who have that hunger and that drive and also that ability or that brain to be able to get them all the way there. And then you talk about players you know, who maybe are aging out because they don't have that hunger anymore. And when that flame dulls, that's the biggest issue is because this is the thing. We all know that, sure, your reflexes start to go down. I think there's like studies done on that shit. That's fine. But Counter-Strike, you can one-tap people like Nico, You can flick people like Monacy. 
or you can call yourself into really good positions where you know you you will give yourself all the best advantages in the world to hit a shot that is still a hard shot that the average player wouldn't hit but that you if you're putting enough hours doing enough practice you can still do it and there's so many different ways that i think you can play this game just as long as you are happy to put in the work mm-hmm. and like that's the difference is putting in the work to understand what you need to do to compete because that that can be the only differentiating factor how can you go one day from being one of the best players in the world to the next day that's not the case how like you know we've seen that yeah. how did how does that happen i think it's a good question because for me i realized that uh, when i started dating my wife who's becoming a, a sports psychologist she asked me this question what i want to achieve with counter strike and i was like i have actually never answered mm. that question in that sense that what i want to do because yeah i want to win a major but that's not all right there mm. has that there has to be something else that i know know that Katowice Cologne major was a big part of my goal, but what I realized is my goal is to be one of the most unique in-game leaders in, in Counter-Strike. The way okay. I've led international teams, uh, be my own person, uh, always stay on the same like road, uh, always believe in myself and be like that kind of leader that was unique. And, and right now, I still have to get more to have that uh, sure. because with that goal, it doesn't only take a major, it doesn't take a grand slam. It's my whole career that will be evaluated. So it made sense that even if I'm not going to be as good in, in one or two years, uh, who knows, I go to another team and I maybe play with talents or I go to be a coach and I say, this is my career. I don't know. But for me, it just put a goal there that even if I win the major grand slam Katowice, it doesn't really make me completely satisfied. Sure. Because if the goal is to win a major, and you win that, you have to really find a goal really fast before you wake up on Monday when you have to start grinding sure. again after winning a major. So for me, that has been important that when that happened with Katowice, Cologne and the major, that I was still so hungry because it's still part of the of my many goals to, to achieve what I want to do. Um, so I think many of those players, also Danish players, AC, Kerbu, stuff like that, I think not having the right goals has been their problems in their career because they had very early success but could really really not really follow up on that after and if that's motivation which i think often is with these players that they don't grind as hard because Mm -hmm. now they made it and i've realized what it meant to have made it in na when i played there because once you win, we talked about this today (laughs) when you when you are in a taiwan team in na you have to mentality you made it now and that's, that's it. and then then you're done. Like two years and yeah. you're out of the contract. Yeah, like right. that's for me is the the main problem with many young players. But now we see, I think, with having so many sports colleges in this system now, that the young players we're grabbing them at 18 years old to understand it is important to have a goal. It is important to have a little structure in your life, how you work. If you wanna be the best for 10 years, you like we have few players right now, Nico, Symbol. Saivu, they had the right winner mentality from beginning, yeah. yeah. but not everyone is born or raised with the winner mentality. Yeah. It's something that is in your personality, and you cannot, you cannot achieve it. It's it's in you or it's not in you, and if not, then you have something else in in your in like in strengths in your books. Yeah, but that right there, that key again, that's returning to that fact is like that's just a, that's a fucking fact. Like we can all sit here and go, I want to be the best Counter Strike player in the world. Everyone could say that. <laughs> How many people actually mean it? Like how many people actually have the follow through? Exactly. How many people have the dedication? How many people have the ability to fucking pull that shit off? I'll tell you, not fucking many. But this thing here, it's like we had a breed of Counter-Strike player. I missed it. I finished playing before <laughs> the fucking money came in. I yeah. wish I was in the spoiled brat era of Counter-Strike players. I could have cashed a couple checks, right? But, you, but these are kids who are now earning money that the three of us would have fucking dreamed about at their <laughs> it age. It was like, wait, hold up. <laughs> They're going to pay me fucking $12,000 <laughs> A month? <laughs> Money back then, it was like... 25000 a month, <laughs> yeah. 30000 a month. Insane. Bro, I'm, I mean, when I first started coaching, I'll be honest, like I had a shock between... I had a lot of respect for players, obviously, because I was a player myself at the time and not a hugely successful one. So I know how difficult it is to get to that level. And these guys were really, really good and you know a lot of accomplishments. And then it's like you see a little bit of like the bad habits and the attitude and you're like how are you Mate, so lackadaisical and like are you not you know like and i don't know i don't want this to sound like i'm bashing people and saying oh they were terrible it's just i understand for them this was like a couple of years that so they got a little bit used to it you don't think about it anymore but it's like you have to always be aware and sort of stay humble in a sense and realize that what you're having at the moment is a privilege sure, you know? yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. it's not going to last forever and you need to nurture it 
if you want it to last. And I think you can see with different teams and players over the years, you know, that it, some lasted longer than others, I think precisely for these reasons. I've seen some horror stories, mate. Like I, I have a picture on my phone of a player from an international team in the last couple of years playing a mobile phone game in a Steam browser while dead during a practice. I, I know this story <laughs> as well, yeah. I know this as Rough. well. But can you believe it? I heard... Uh, can you believe it? In the last couple of years, how is that even possible? The worst, thing, the, the, the worst thing is I heard like an even worse version where it wasn't a mobile game. It was like uh, mobile, like, you know, slot machines or something oh like that. Oh my God. But I feel like the, mo the mobile game makes more sense. Like <sighs> This would be like really ridiculous. You know, it would be too much. It's like, I, I get it, right? Like, I know what we're doing. It's a fucking video game. I understand that, right? I, I, I can step back enough from this to go, it's a video no, game but on the listen, screen. No, I get it, no but I, don't, I don't accept that argument. All right. Because the only reason, like, sports are just more domestic, right? You know, they're, they're super popular. What, what is football? It's a couple guys running. It's guys running field. after and kicking around thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. around and trying to put it between like three things, right? It's, and that's easy, you score no? you they score a point that. for that. Yeah. You score a point if you do that, right? Like Who imagine if just, game, just, yeah. just just try to think of it yeah. that way, and you will be like, well, actually, you know that that, yeah. that, that does actually sound ridiculous when you say it's like twenty two dudes running after one ball trying to put it in. You know, a goal, right? But and but millions because, of people watch it. But, yeah. but because it <laughs> was like cameras deciding it, it if that's a goal or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it became entertaining. It became it's something that people love to watch, mm. man, for yeah, whatever true. reason. And it's been around for so long. And you have obviously the fan clubs, everything. The you know, people fuck in Brazil. We've all been in Brazil, dude. Football is a religion in Brazil yeah. more than religion is a religion. Yeah. Like when Brazil plays the World Cup, when they score a goal across Brazil. It's like new. It's always like when the clock hits midnight yeah. for New Year's, and for you, you don't even need to understand it. You just you know accept it. That's how it is. In the same way, there's guys who like to watch guys run after a ball and are willing to die for that club for those guys. There's other dudes who like to watch other dudes click the mouse and keyboard and play a video game. It right? is kind of cool. It's though, because right? it's a skill, and you tried doing it, and you weren't that yeah, good you at appreciate it, and you it, appreciate the yeah. skill it takes to do it on a level that they do it. It's kind of cool, though, right? Like, look at this fucking thing. But the same with also the young... Like, I remember when I was watching football and playing football when I was young, like, when I saw uh, these uh, players doing, uh, like, le crossing left and then going mm. right, and next yeah. time I had training the day after, I tried to do that at the practice, you know? And everybody in the club watched that game the day before, so everybody's trying yeah. uh, to challenge each other. But the same thing is about Counter-Strike, you know? When you throw a smoke, somebody goes straight into the server, like, this is insane smoke, or the way he Or peaked, the Canada you know? Strat. Yeah, the Canada Strat, suddenly everybody had it after that game, <laughs> yeah. the Cologne. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think that's what's great about this. Yeah, sometimes I'll stay back and just like thinking, where I am right now, what I've done in, with my life is like, it's just a video game. And then I'm like, but at the same time, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, for me, it's a lifestyle, you know? Like, you, you live and breathe for Counter-Strike if you want to be the best. And when people are doing that in practice, to get back to that, that's rough to see because then you're wasting your one else's time. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, you have personal accountability, but then you have accountability to your fucking teammates. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like if you're happy to let your teammates down, then you're happy to let anybody down. That's fucking But that's sad. also one thing right now where I feel like the young generation, I think many of the players I played with came from traditional sports. They grew up playing volleyball, tennis, football, whatever. They played a team game. Mm. Coming into Counter-Strike, they knew what a team was meant to be. You had a role, you had to do this and how to be social with your teammates. Now when they're the young generation, because they start that early at 10, sure. 9, yeah. they don't really learn how to be a team. Mm. So when they come in and you, to join your first professional team, how do you act to your teammates? How do you respect them? How do you see your thing? How do you work on yourself in a team environment? Mm. And I think that's what we, like many of the older generation players, they were already knowing, that, yeah. to that. And in, in traditional sports, you have like, Young players at 10 age, they're already talking with a sports psychologist, you know, yeah. Yeah. In, and learning how to... The facilities are already exactly. there, yeah. the, su the support staff, everything. And, you know, for yourself, you've been playing for a long time, but, you know, I'm pretty sure, or maybe in Maus, but also now, you know, Brock is 10 years probably younger than you. So, you know, when you're playing with guys like Crane, all of Nico, Guardian, like, the, the, you're all similar age, so-and-so, yeah. right? So you can find some conversation topics right yes different nationalities different cultures different interests but you know 
But if it's a guy who's like, you know, 10 years younger than you and you don't have the same interest it's and he's hard, a little yeah. bit different, mm-hmm. it's like you're struggling to connect and, and you need to at, yeah. to, at least to some extent, as a teammate, right? Just so the things function. You, need a, re- you need a relationship outside of just you yeah. calling and telling them what to do. Like, yeah. you know, you actually need to know these people on a somewhat personal level. It's not just fucking business. That's how you work the best, right? When mm-hmm. you know the person and you can talk to him as a bro. Yeah. Like, if there's something wrong in the game. And I think I realized that because when I joined Mouse, I um, I wanted to share a room with Frozen because yeah. he was 16 years old, I think, when mm. he joined Mouse. Yeah. And for me, it was really important to have a really good relationship with a guy that uh, I then can talk really good about CS, you know? And, and we became really, really good friends, even yeah. though the age is like 13 years uh, different. And to this day, we're still good friends. But I had so special relationship with him. Um, in that sense, he saw me as like a teacher for him, you know, and I saw him as a, a mentor. My, yeah, a mentor. And I think we had that really special relationship that mm. we could talk about life as well. That's you know, cool. He, That's really cool. When he talked about girlfriend problems, I've been there for the last yeah. 11 years. I know like a lot of <laughs> things, Top what not to do and what to do, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that that is also unique. And I try to take that. Uh, and like you said, you're so big difference. And it's hard always to find something you're both love besides cs right but this but is the human element that you're talking about right now yeah. which which this right here and everything we do is usually devoid of yeah. like this human element of like you know with t- oh you know like people actually have problems and talk to each other mm. about things and it's not just the fucking video game like we're all human <laughs> beings with families and everything else going on in our lives like we're pretty devoid of any of that like obviously people aren't going out there and advertising their private lives all the time i understand that no, but they? no. no and and that's everyone's but but like the thing is it's hard to it's not hard to i think the best way to relate counter-strike to people to to get any indication that this thing's fucking hard is the comms right is when you guys have a round and the amount that gets communicated from freeze time to the fucking end of the round it every human being in the world even if they don't understand what banana means when it gets called on a map right even if they don't understand any of the vernacular they understand that people are communicating intensely right (laughs) while also trying to stay calm and focus on their mouse and do all these fucking brilliant things and that's what i think like the key to people who are not camera normies to love in our game has always been the comm stuff like those onboard videos that esl do i think they're fucking amazing yeah, yeah I'm, pu- I'm putting voice comes out on my youtube and i think what it helped what's I your should. youtube yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Kerrigan, he's definitely yeah, got more followers than us so this yeah, is <laughs> i know but you know as long as we can help man we'll help no but i, I think what that did was actually people understanding broken so from the brand side perspective, they actually got to see how broke he is in yeah. the game. And yeah. that is a huge difference to what you see on the cameras, on the stream. And I think by that, I had a lot of players. I know other teams are watching and mm. learning for, because we were winning and I still put the finals and how we're winning, you know. I'm not putting what I'm calling and all that kind of stuff, but of still the, the intensity, the way we call, yeah. the way we move. And being an international team, I think that helps to understand what is pro CS for People who don't under only watch stream, yeah. and put to other teams who's trying to be the sure, becoming yeah, the best, yeah. you know. So I think VoiceCam is is a fantastic tool to showcase the world what Counter Strike is because it is a lot more than just clicking the mouse and yeah. shooting. It's so much communication. At what time? At what specific moment do you call this and move as a team? And where's the right intensity? When are you too hyped and missing out on some comps, you know? Um, and that's like. I'm so grateful that I have a chance to showcase the world and be in control of my own, like the voice come of the team. So yeah. we're not leaking That's nice. uh, too much stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Brokey because, you know, we brought him in after the Berlin major in, in 2019 mm. and I was so impressed with him, like from day one because of his comms. Like from day one, he was coming really good and he was like telling other people sometimes what, yeah. to, you know, when he sees that something happened and no one's saying anything, no one's taking initiative, he would come up with a suggestion and say, let's do this. And for a player so young that had no tier one or really any spe- special team experience, right, playing in that sort of an environment, that was, like, super cool to see. And him, and I know it sounds rough, but him, Monesi, bit a little bit. It's like, because of guys like these, I'm not willing anymore to give, you know, a young player too much time mm. right like I because see what you're saying. i i've seen this quote i've said it a couple of times you know it came from whatever some sports guys like you know there's no young or old players there's good or bad players right and just of course some younger players might be less polished but you could see that they have it right like they understand it they get it so they just need to 
work on something. I think that's clear with Monesi, for example, right? Like, he was pretty raw when he joined G2, but you could tell that with every tournament, every you could see he, the progress. Yeah, you could yeah. see less mistakes being made. You could see more awareness, right? Like, and, and that's when you are, you know, a little bit scared <laughs> if you are someone else. But with some players, it's like... Yeah, they can shoot good, and but over tournaments, that's the only thing that you keep seeing, and some of the mistakes are recurring, and so on. And, and I don't know how do you how do you feel about Brocky? I I think um, for, because for me, just you know, it's like sometimes it's all like the only thing he was. I don't think he was a choker or anything like that. It's just sometimes he's a, he was a little bit too erratic. You know, with his movements, like we in Serbia, we say it's like you have a worm in your ass. Like you always have to. <laughs> yeah, we say ants yeah. in your pants. Ah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. So you always have to like move, 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 and you know sometimes he would create a bad timing for himself because of moving too much. But that was it. I, I think it's. I'm always very careful changing the orbs too much. Um, for me, it's always been the orb. I look at the team, right? So I see an orb, I see okay. I have to understand his qualities. What is he good at? He's good at controlling, moving, having all perspective. But he lacks tunnel vision. Mm. He lacks just looking at the screen, looking at this, and not thinking about anything else in the round, right? So what I tried to do is, okay, to activate him more on the T side because he would move a little too much on the C side. And I think that's fine as long as we can play around as a team. Like, it will create a bad round for him. But most of the time, if he's in the zone, he hits the right timing. And I see him in that sense that he has a game center of the symbol of the Nikos. He has something special, and I cannot put word on it. Why is sure. rotating B? What tricks him off? But he just he felt in the moment. I don't ask him questions why he's coming B. Sometimes I'm doing it to understand his thought process to make sure that we are aligning in the same vision. And if he says I gamble, I'm like, fine, okay, that. That's part of the game, you know? Yeah. But what I tried to do on him over time, and, and I think that comes down to Robin and me creating a system around him on a T-side where he can call Latvia rounds mm -hmm. on specific maps to create a possibility on the T-side. Because I sometimes feel he's floating out the game. And there I think he still struggles to find his way back into the game. But on the CT sides, I, I know he will always try to force a rotation or move to a side and, and tell me to push banana, you know, so he can move back and forth. Um, so I'm always trying to play into the strengths and not change them too much. So I'm letting having this worm in, in his, in his yeah. ass, but <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure it's not all that all the time, that he has to stay sometimes. He has to be a little more tunnel vision, but on the same time, it's also part of where he is now. Mm. And if I'm changing that too much, I'm always scared of doing overthinking when you're More creating. harm than good. Yeah, um, because I saw what happened to Vuxic. You know, Vuxic played yeah. with me. He had full freedom, and he played really good. He was a good player, in my opinion, and yeah. he made us win tournaments. Absolutely. He went to Cloud9, and he got changed as an Orba, and he's a changed man now. And the same I've seen with Acor. When he came to Mouse, I played one tournament with him. He was really good, and then he became a different player. And if that's the player... Or and the in Gamer system, Legion again, he yeah. was really good. So for me, that just showcased that Orbas is... A fragile area mm. of the of the structure of the team, and to have a good structure, you need to make sure that the orb has a, a good comfort zone. I it. just have a quick quick uh, follow up is because you also played with Guardian too, and I've been on a team with him. Do do they are they similar to you in a sense of I feel like both of them work really good when it's like a little bit of chaos, right? Yeah. Like and they jump in into yeah. the chaos and they just have like. The re peaks and the flicks, the and you know that feels like we're, like yeah. mirage for both guys. Yeah. You know, it's when they can be in the zone and just do insane things. I, I think so. I, I think, th yeah, Voxic and Brokey reminds a little bit of each other in these chaotic moments where they actually flourish. Like if they're chaos, you know he's calm. If there's quiet, there's chaos. Yeah, so you know, that's like, a great way to so, put it. so I think um, that that's why it works so good with Brokey now in this team. Robin is there as a as a mentor. I think. Rob's coming in has created more socialized Brokey and learning more to be like a teammate. And what I love the most when I read into about Brokey, what is his goal? To be a better teammate. Mm. And nobody there know he's not thinking about himself and how many kills he's getting, but becoming a better, better player because he knows he can be an even better teammate. Sure. And that's, that's really good to see. And I'm so happy that he's working that direction to try to improve the team instead of improving himself and um, yeah I mean he's he's super good and I think I said in a minute to use those three players they're so young with so much experience that 
I know if they stay together for a long time, they can achieve great things. Thank and you. They just need to have the same vision and the same goals as as player. So so, yeah, yeah, well, and then it goes back to what we're talking about before, as long as they don't lose the the hunger, right? The hunger, as long yeah. as that doesn't dull. But th- so okay, so what you're saying here is, or, or I this is how I've interpreted what you've just said about orpers. And I, you c- c- course correct me here wherever I'm a little bit off the rails. So essentially, orpers are temperamental. I think is one of the, the parts I'll take here is the sense that their read for the game as an Orpo is them putting him in a position where they feel the most comfortable, yeah. but not always, it's not always the right call, mm-hmm. but they try and sense the game a lot, which is what an in-game leader does as well. Yeah. So with the way that you've built this up here and you said that you don't want to tamper with the way they approach the game too much, are you calling the rest of the system then around them, right? Like, is it, like hey, Rops, I know you really like to do this, but we need you to, to do this. Is the rest of the system then built around the... Uh, sorry, the the whole system is built around what you want to call the way that your Orpa works, what you can feel you can call around him and then everybody else? Yeah, yes and no. I think what I'm always careful with is to tamper other players as well at the same time. Because like if I'm doing everything for Broker to perform at highest level, but I make two or three of my players five percent worse, it's not worth it, right? Yeah. So in my career I've been I've basically been everything. I've been an Orpa, I've been a caller, I've been second hair calling, lurking, enter fragging. So for me, I know all the roles, how to play, and I know all the struggles there is as a lurker. I know the struggles as an Orba. If you, if you play too much default, but your rifle is going too fast, you never get the, the trade or you never get to hold the line for a second, you know? So I'm always trying to base my calling and being like selfless too much to the time that mm-hmm. I'm sacrificing myself to, for example, rain getting an impact in that round. So I'm, when I see a player struggling in a game, I'm trying to call around them to have opportunities to get back into a game because our team is built with three star players in that sense that if, if one is dropping off, it's fine. But if two of them is dropping off out of a game, we have a hard time winning. Sure. Where if you have a similar side rule, you want the system only to be them. So to answer the question about Brokey, I'm trying to give as much space as possible in the way I see the game, the way I want to call. But I see the side, he has a lot of freedom in, in that sense. He can call whatever he wants. Um, because in the roles I haven't seen the side is, I'm taking what's left over, you know? Like, sure. So yeah, B yeah, Mirage, yeah. I don't... You plug in the gaps. I, I don't really call what to do on City Mirage. I might have a read at a stack A now. I think they're coming B. But most of the rounds that haven't really seen the side is Rob's Twist and Brokey, like communicating what they want to do to make sure everybody has a good opportunity to, to get some kills. So if you don't have a strong AWPer, then you can't... You, you, I feel that's when you get more execute heavy teams or more yes. you know strat heavy teams, right? If you don't have an AWPer that you can rely on to be setting a good tempo for the game. If so, you don't have a strong AWPer, you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but there are some teams way. that don't have strong AWPers. But that's the that's sense. If you look at my whole career, every single team I've been in, I don't have the same 100% calling style. So when I played with Mouse, I knew that I needed a lot more ABC and I needed a lot more heavy executes because the mid-rounds would not be as strong as it would be in phase where I came from. Sure. And the same now with adding Rups, I knew now my late rounds are going to be better than with Olof because Rups would He's more close, comfortable. Yeah. close more rounds out than Olof in, in that sense where they are now, meaning I have more opportunities. So the structure, and that's your job as a caller. You look at your pieces, you see which one has the most potential and you push that potential as most as possible and find out a structure that where everybody can flourish and understand a new role and, and try to sit down and talk to them. But I also been in the game so many times. I played with Rups. I knew what he would bring. I always told Trist what's going to happen when Rups comes, how he plays, how he sees the game, what needs to be done from him more than, than was not done with Olof, you know? So yeah. I have a lot of experience in, in with playing with different players now that I'm on top of it already, but you have to be really on top of it when you're calling that, that every player you play with sees the game differently and need to have them in the same vision category. You don't need everyone to understand A, B, C on the same level, yeah. but you need them in the same chapter of the, of the book. You sure. know? Okay. Like everybody can do differently, but I don't want too much boxed in like other teams have. You see this here though. Tell, I, this, is a dying, this feels like this would be a dying breed of approach in the game though, don't you? There's not gonna, how many not. strong in-game leaders well, do you think I, are there still out there like this man? Well, how, I, how many can you name? They listen to a podcast, Chad, and they hear the <laughs> secrets. No, but <laughs> I think there's a couple as well that are aware of this. But I wanted to, to say this as well. Uh, I agree 100%. And for example, when Kerrigan was in mouse and Asis face played them multiple times, right? We won some, we lost some. But I always knew that if we can weather the storm at the start when they're on the T side, like if we can... St- not lose to the Deagles if they lose the pistol and 
if we stop some of the early executes, when they have to switch to default, it's going to be much easier to play, right? But I also knew that if they do start snowballing and we can't, when we lose to the first couple of executes, right, we can't stop that, then the game is going to be very, very hard to win, right? Not only because they have a lead, but also because the players are feeling it, right? Like they were the sort of players that when they have, you know, have Boxic, the crazy Chris, Chris J too, yeah. and, and Frozen, right? Who are like, oh, and then you have Rob somewhere there, even if it's a 1v3, you know, he's really, really good. And if he has good timing and good positioning that was created for him by the rest of the players doing their thing, that's still like, a, you know, he still has a chance to win it. So I was always like, but that's what I want to sort of not even ask you, but, you know, of course, at some point you have to change. But I always felt like if you just kept trying the, the things that we, you know, maybe stopped a couple of times, that would actually be even more success. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that that is the biggest weakness I have. I think sometimes, and, and that's something I talk with Robin coming into the team, I need him, when, when I'm playing the game, I'm doing the right calls, we're not winning the rounds. I would have Robin telling me, Finn, we are doing the right thing. So whatever is coming into your mind next, just do it. Don't mm. don't mm. don't overthink. Don't think now we need to play default or now we need to go completely different. But sometimes, uh, for example, the G two game. That was the first time in a long time, and I think it was ancient. We are losing so many clutches, and in my mind, I'm telling myself, we actually have the rounds. But I want so bad to change the pace now. Yeah. And maybe i shouldn't but that's why robin is like trying to guide me and like finn you don't write things we're doing the to keep doing the same thing we just need to close the rounds it's not and your I, fault that you lose a 4v2 post plant right no, like your job is to get yourself in that spot yeah but so. then then in my mind okay what if we just rush b now and <laughs> we have more time to play the round than instead of the playing the late round you know so there's these options i don't want to limit them but it's good to have that picture behind me saying like we are doing the right things we lose because you use a code see all the duels on the monitors and yeah. how we're taking and people communicating good you see everything is good but we're not winning rounds it's very hard as a coach and and obviously between me and robin we have so much history that we understand and each trust. other's body language and trust so when he calls something i know it's the right thing i go with it without like hesitating and the same way if he sees my body language is good he knows he just takes a pause he doesn't say anything but he gives me like a five second window to think more than just going with the feeling. So what's the code word for when a player said, nah, I just missed that shot. And Raban comes in and goes, nah, he, he didn't just miss that shot, mate. He completely <laughs> fucked it. What's the code word? What's the code word for that? That's actually something I'm working on with this team. And I think that comes down to everything a teammate. Like how often do you actually hear a teammate say my bad in a round? Hmm. Yeah, I, it's not often because I, in my opinion, when I do a wrong call, I write my bad in chat. I thought they would stack B, I win B, you know. Sure. Or if I fuck, if I really just screwed around, I say my bad, you know. Like having that as a caller that people actually take responsibility yeah, for yeah. the round gives me more confidence. Like, okay, they realize it's their mistake. Let's keep going. But anyway, in the demo review, we will see that you f screw yeah, up the duo, true. but yeah, why yeah. just not say it in the moment yeah. and like. Uh, so my I was playing a face at Pug yesterday. I should have traded a guy. I went, sorry, I should have traded you. I fucking yeah. whiffed. I whiffed this I whiffed the, <laughs> he opened the space. I should have had the kill. It just, it sorry, just, man. It just feels good. When somebody's yeah. saying responsibility for a round, that's my bad guys. Just keep playing next, you know? Instead of like, did you get blind? No. Yeah. Did you <laughs> fail? Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Well, what happened then? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's we, the solution? It was just better. It was just better. Yeah. It's like no, but uh, it's yeah. true because sometimes even you know, as I'm casting some of these games, it's like, and I have X-ray, I have the minimap, I see everything, and sometimes you still struggle to, because something happens really fast to realize what happened. So imagine if you're actually playing, right? You're focusing on your crosshair, and still you have to deal with all that information. Of course, a couple of times, even as a coach, right? You are standing behind and you see everything, but you don't have in-game sound, mm. right? That's also a problem. So you're just seeing the. The, the, the video <laughs> of it going on and you hear the comms but sometimes it can be a little bit you know confusing why did we lose that round or or whatever but you know it's nice to have someone come up and say hey that's on me yeah I, I think, think I think it's, uh, for me it's important at least uh, like I know when when I was secondary calling or uh, was a star orbo and, and got B was like oh, why are we losing this round you know and I'll say, it's my bad. Let's go next. There's no reason. Like, you can watch yeah. it after. It's, it's my bad, you know? You no point in discussing it now, no, right? No, and yeah, mm -hmm. but you still want to know as a caller. And that's the point where, I, like, but what are we doing wrong that we don't finish the rounds, yeah. you know? Like, you I need yes, that accountability. If I'm, if I'm dying, I can switch and I see, okay, I know why we're losing the round. But if I'm actually in the late round, I just don't see how we're positioning. 
everything should be fine. So I think accountability is something that everybody should learn. And that's what you have when you grow up in a team. As sure. a young player in football or whatever, you, you, know, you know, like you they made a mistake yeah. and they made a goal because you made a mistake. Because yeah. everyone has to run laps. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that exactly. Well. But I was going to ask you this because I feel like obviously the coach's job is to hold the players accountable, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I'll do all the time, right? In, you know, not berate them, but in a good way. But I always Listen felt... Here, you motherfucker. <laughs> why yeah. the fuck do you keep missing this but, fucking smoke? But I always <laughs> felt that the strongest team you 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 get to having the strongest team when players hold each other accountable right not just having robin come in or mm. or you know but you know whether it's of course you're gonna do it as the captain as well and say hey come on guys like you know we're fucking around here too much we're like missing shit and your team is probably not a great example like you said because you have like three equal stars mm. but let's say you know that would be nico on g2 or simple or navi saying Zywood. hey it's i would which is what actually Zonic and Apex were saying like that's actually the one thing they would like a little bit more of him to sometimes attitude. just come on and say like just a little bit more attitude yeah. and be like, hey guys, like come on, give me a chance. You know, like we were playing every round three v five after twenty seconds. Mm. You know, so do you do you feel the same way about that? Like that the players holding each other accountable? I think for sure that everybody should hold everyone accountable, right? Like everybody is on the same vision, the same goal as, as a player. Everybody wants to win the tournament, want to be the best player in the world, right? So how are you going to do that? Have everybody accountable, everybody meaning out to practice, playing good, playing the best to the level what they can at home. But it is sometimes hard, you know, like personalities and who they are. If you say like you need to step up and practice, you know, and it's very easy to always just point fingers. There's not always... I don't think there's any player in, in CSGO that has a team where everybody's playing 100% on the same time in practice. Like, they will play like an official game. Some players will drop 5% yeah. of what the intensity will be. Um, I know as a caller, I'm not figuring out the solution and, like, intense moment, but I'm trying my best, you know, and, and sometimes motivation and, and things, you're not having the same energy, and that affects the team. So how do you hold that accountability? Because the whole team drops in communication and practice, but it starts somewhere... Yeah. But but how do you make sure that not because one guy's dropping, everybody's like, okay, then practice is rough now, yeah. drop the communication, you know? It's like a it, virus. Yeah. It is. And, and like a in, fucking in, virus, dude. And that's what I mean when you have subs in football. If you're not playing good in practice, you're not going to play in the field. Yeah. You know, that that's the problem we have in CSGO where you are to some level secure to play the next official game, the next tournament, you know? Like you don't so you have get to be more of a dickhead. Yeah, I, I mean, I well, also essentially, fall in, yeah, yeah. yeah, I fall in that same category as well. Sometimes I'm not doing my best in practice. Yeah. I can't always do it, but I need accountability to myself. And I think what you're saying is everybody should have the accountability, but it is hard from where you are in your life. And you Of know. course, and that's why, why, why it's a team. You yeah. know, if you're feeling down, someone else will maybe take the mantle up, yeah. for that practice. And also, I want to make this perfectly clear. There are practices or practice days or just a map or two towards the end that are just fucking around. <laughs> yeah, you're just because running man, at people. You're, like, you know, you're, all, yeah. you're all at that stage. You're probably practicing. Up. You couldn't find good opponents, right? So you wouldn't get much out of it if you're super serious. So, And that's good because that's good for morale. Mm. And that's as fine. As long as do. everyone's on that same Yeah, as page, long as yeah. everyone's on the same... Yeah, and that's absolutely. a problem not always. One guy is super serious. <laughs> yeah, right. One, and one then that guy gets mad. With a good prank and yeah. then he gets mad because everybody is like, bad communication Someone's he dies in the back and he wants to finish that last prank with good mood yeah. so he can go yeah. to bed as a happy guy, you know? Yeah. And that... That happens to everyone, but that's the problem. You can't have everyone, okay, time to have fun, guys. And one <laughs> guy wants to be super serious, yeah. you know? We've all been there before. Yeah. But I guess the harder thing is calling people out for their bullshit live. Like, yeah. and I guess it's hard to do in a way, but I think this is another thing, right? And it goes back, we're having this conversation before, you and Frozen is a great example mm. here, but it's the way that people deal with relationships, right? I have a hard time knowing how to talk to a lot of people, right? Even people who I talk to all the time, it's like, okay, this guy's not in a good mood. How do I talk to him in a way? Why that are you looking at me when you're saying this? <laughs> well, I spend more time with you than I do with Finn, oh, so it like, make, No, when make... you said the guy's not in a good mood, and you're looking at me. I don't know, let's, <laughs> look at, let's look at Trace. Let's look at Trace over here on the couch, right? Pain so on? when it, we, yeah, pain one. Like Greyhound didn't make it. But let's that. say, you know, we're like, our oh, Trace is... They, 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 they still have a chance. Who? Pain, Greyhound, this was the mid-bracket. They have to play 0 Nation in a rematch. Yeah, and then the and winner then they have of to beat NAP, NAP, yeah. yeah. So they're probably... It's, it's not impossible. It's, it's possible, but they blew their load already. And this series, they should have won. So uh, I had hope, and the hope is, is gone. 
do you like the fact that couch has been moved further forward here, Finn? I don't know if you'll notice Yanko has us <laughs> redecorating the place today. Uh, we've moved because the, the plant is hitting me in the back of my head. Oh. We, we've moved it forward by about six inches. So we've made some real oh, changes to the changes. set today. Don't yeah. underestimate the six inches, man. Actually, the dynamic of the room. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. The feng shui seems a little bit yeah. off, doesn't it? What do you think of our madhouse, by the way? I think it's cool. I, I think um, having something different. Just time to time. Like honestly, uh, I think what Blas is doing, what he still is doing at the big events, is very uptight. It's very professional. It has to be that way. It, you know, you come on on stage, you stay like this, and you, mm. you know. But yes. having this uh, beyond the summit vibe, I feel like it is, and especially with them closing, having something just like this, a little bit different, feels way better because um, I like the the seriousness and stuff. But we also need. In this scenario, I can't imagine being you guys for five weeks on a green screen. It mu- that, that, <laughs> Ask this guy. He's <laughs> well <laughs> experienced. Yeah, that would we be had a chat on, rough, the, on the drive over. <laughs> it, it is rough because yeah. it's also, man, I'm not going to lie. I'm sitting there casting or like having to talk about whatever, pain versus Greyhound. saw. No, pain versus saw in like 03, 03 game, right? Like they're both not going to qualify. Like, and I'm not saying this in a cocky way. Like, I understand for those teams, it's a big deal because that was the most I ever made it is being mm. at that level. And for me, it meant a lot every game. And I try to give justice to the players, but you also know that when they know they don't have any more chance of qualifying, it's a different game. And, you know, you're, you're making me the, the, the segment is like super bop, bop, bop. And I, it, it, you're it, backed it, up by the viewers here, right? Yeah. Like what you're saying, like what you're bringing in here about the fact that these segments being well, they, the way they are for... Uh, let's say uh, last season of pro league and Yanko's mm. they're presenting it the viewer is the viewer is not invested in the post match maybe they're invested in the game maybe they're yeah. interested in the counter strike but they're not invested in the team so they're probably not invested in the post match to the breakdown because what we're doing is not entertaining i wouldn't watch our show from last season well hold right? up would like, you watch our show from now yeah, now okay, it's fine. Okay, all right, all right, fine, but fine. Listen, I got a little I bit have, stressed out I'm, there. I'm, I'm a little bit worried. No, I'm like, a lot of different things can be entertaining, right? Yeah. I'm the type of a guy, like, I got into the NFL, like, five, six years ago. And one of the two, the most entertaining things, well, three were, one of it was learning more about the game. So knowledge can be entertaining, if that's what you're mm-hmm. into, you know, analysis, whatever. Second thing was the storylines from before, all these rivalries, all these, like, sick players. You know, that was, like, got me hooked. And the third part for me, personally, was a little bit, looking at their broadcast and trying to, you know, pick up things for my own job and what I could improve at, what, what I could steal. So, but you watch last season, you're not getting sick analysis from us because we don't have the time, you know, you or, or, graphic the, or, or, graphic, or, or yeah, graphic, you know, asset stuff. to asset to do it. You're not getting the personalities on the broadcast that could be funny, like the inside NBA crew, because we don't have the time to showcase our personality. Mm. So what are you getting? You're not really getting much that would make you like want to stay around and wait unless you're a really hardcore fan of that team and you want to see through the segment, right? But this way, you get... It's like different every time. You get entertainment. That, that's, that's also what I feel like with this now. You don't know what's coming. Yeah. If, yeah. You don't know if it's funny, serious, a quiz. Not uh, a way, to be honest. Full <laughs> bullshit. Or like you say, yeah, there might you. be a guy on the, co- uh, on the couch then having knowledge and you talk about serious CS. But if you're yourself, you, you guys yourself, you maybe just... Bullshit around, you yeah, know. Yeah, dude, we had a don't segment. know what's happening, which I think is nice for the viewer. And the people don't like it; they probably, in a way, don't see it. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I think True. you're getting something from both worlds, and as long as not every single event, because that would be having CS little less serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, We had a segment the other day where we just played Monopoly in between <laughs> two maps. We just played. We didn't even say anything. Mm-hmm. It was just cut to us. We were playing Monopoly, mm-hmm. and that was it. Today they had between this series. Between map number two and number three, it was... Anders was talking about breathing Anders exercises. Anders and Maui or Anders no, and Hugo, Hugo were just doing breathing exercises in between. And being so, like, and yeah, self-aware and, and all And like that meditate kind of or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's wild, but I like it because it's, you know, and of course this is the first season for us that mm-hmm. we're doing it this way and... You know, Chad is a, this come, come, came up with probably 70% of what you guys like see the guy as, you know. So if you hate it, mad it, creative. It no. wasn't me. But I'm saying <laughs> after we're done, and obviously week two was already better than week one. Like we, we were more aware of what to do. And after the whole season, we will have some things that yeah. we know work that we could replicate mm. from group to group. That's yeah. a little bit sometimes rough. But this but is the this is the key, right? And this is something that maybe we should use Carrigan for here because this for the group stage is one thing. But for the playoffs, we're not going to go super serious button up suits and nonsense, no, no. right? 
But we're talking about different ways that we can present the game to the viewer, mm. right? And, and, and be able to give them... And, and we have the, the time and the ability. Like I can just come home and make a fucking clip on my computer right here. I can, I can get the shit done, right? I'm just trying to come up with different ways and unique ways that we can convey the X's and the O's of the game. So like one thing that I've tried to do over my years, uh, especially when Yanko fucking left me, uh, and went Sorry, coaching, uh, you know, you know, it's a sore spot with <laughs> yeah. me, Finn, because we had this really good. It was me, Alex, and Yanko, and it was fun. He's right. Know? He is correct. But regardless of that, when he left me, I was coming up with different ideas on how to kind of just be able to do analysis. Where I, it, it, and this isn't meant to be disrespectful to other people I worked with. We just had like this really good natural rapport, like between the three of us. Yes. So I was trying to come up with different ways that I could present Counter Strike because I got put on some situations where it was literally a host and me. I was like solo analyst. So I had to have different ways to present things as well. And one of the keys is, okay, like let's look at a map. These are the CT positions people play. People can relate with that. Right? Yeah. People can go, oh yeah, this guy plays B, poor bastard, right? On Mirage, that fucking sucks. Oh, you know, but like, but that was one key, <laughs> that, right? But like in terms of how we can offer Counter-Strike up now, I said that the other day, I've been watching, uh, I'll be honest with everybody else. I've been trying to play some pugs with Justin, get him in the server, get him back ready to go. Uh, I just want to interrupt that and say that Chad single-handedly is to be praised for the resurgence of JKS because he's been just forcing him to play face it's with him all the time. So JKS played CS more and now he's insane. I helped him a little bit as well. Yeah, I think you helped him a lot more than I did. Suddenly he was into fragging on those two suddenly. I, I, love it. I, love I gave him two roles. I could never make him entry fragging. <laughs> I, I love that he gave you guys a shout out though during yeah. his MVP speech. That was really nice, yeah. you know. It's pretty classy class yeah. here but anyway we we're talking about positions and obviously he plays like the a anchor on inferno and we we're talking about the other elite level players who do that which is shush and robs right the, i think heroic g2 and phase are the three elite level teams at the moment right now yes. so i was watching through and i just watched like a bunch of robs demos on the map and i just looked at different opening moves that he has that are like aggressive and then we got to the point and i, I spoke to you about this mm. we got to the point where i was like okay well robs actually looks like the most aggressive out of those three names like jks is in between and shush is the most passive and i was like well we can highlight all these different aggressive moves that he has but then I'm trying to, like, I can, we can do that in the segment for a viewer. Hey, we're going into a phono. This is plays that Robs goes for, that he likes to, he's the most, you know, we can do that. Yes. But what's the best way for us to, and I don't, I'm trying to think, because there's team Counter Strike, there's individual Counter Strike, there's like the meta, there's the micro, there's, uh, there's the, the head to head, there's so much. How can, I'm just, what can we do are that's you, different, man? You, or is that your question, or, or is your question? I got lots of questions. Like, <laughs> I've only got questions. What, what is it What is it that, for example. What would get your dick hard if you heard us talking about yeah. it on an analyst desk? Pre game or post game? I think I, always, I have always loved storylines. Mm. Uh, and I think you can dig into them in way different ways. You can dig into, let's say, us versus G2, right? There is a storyline of Nico leaving to joining this, but also the way the CD game, we're actually playing one-to-one -one mm. the same. The same mirror roles, matchup. Mirror matchup. How do you see that? You can showcase that in a position. In, yeah, in a position much, or yeah. in that sense, I, you, I would show, yeah. you would show the, the Cologne win we had and the Katowice, how they won in the statistics. You know, you bring up where you feed the storyline to see like, okay, this is exactly the same team. Okay. And this is exactly the same map pool. Instead of just saying, they both like the maps, they will play these maps, but you actually see they won the tournament on this map. They won, you know, this is their key I'm thing. And I think feeding the storyline is always getting me interested in like, okay, they are building the story up and then you see the game, it's completely different. Yeah, and, right. And, and then, <laughs> it's, then it's also nice <laughs> yeah. because like, it was not supposed to happen like that. Yeah, and it makes for great uh, That's what I love with, with when I'm watching Champions League football for a no whole hour. They talk about these the triangle in top and defenders in the back. And then suddenly the other team is winning and Mbappe, Messi is not even touching the ball. You know, all the half an hour yeah. talked about that. But that is because that's the team. That's the vision of the team. Sure. So I think storyline is always something you can relate to. Him and there, was all, there will always be one. There's always be a storyline. You just have to find it. And at, how to at least one. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. So two things. I actually had for your game against G2 in Katowice. I knew Nuke was going to be the map, right? One that you know, one of the at some point, either yeah. they were going to pick it or this whatever. Or we were picking. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm like, I had this. I told this to producer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find one round from you guys and one round from them. That's very similar. Right, I'm gonna just present it like, okay, I have a couple of rounds here for you from G2, right? That I'm gonna walk you through, and then I'm gonna present it and say, and look how they did this, like, and it's pretty similar. That's their thing. This is Nico. This is, and then I'm gonna go after I'm done. I'm like, actually, guys, 
one of the rounds was from FaZe. Mm. And that's how similar these teams are. Mm, right? that's, yeah. a, that's a cool way to make that happen. I don't know why we didn't end up doing it. It doesn't matter. And I'll say a second thing because this is what I was thinking when I'm watching these tons of NFL and I envy these guys like how much info they have. And then I realize they only have one map. Yeah. Quote yeah, unquote, yeah, right? <laughs> the pitch is always the same in mm. both games. And that would be the equivalent of me having a week to prepare for G2 phase on Inferno. Yeah. I have a week to prepare for yeah. this game. Mm. Bro, I'd also come out and say, yes, when Rob's moves two feet to the right, <laughs> <laughs> then Rain is going to you know, throw yeah. a smoke. Of course. So I think that's something that we're lacking. But what me and Chad were discussing about, you know, for playoffs potentially doing what I thought might be interesting in a way to do it is sort of in the pregame presented from like a coach's standpoint, right? Like I would do before a game, would scout the opponent and see some weakness and I would say, okay, this is what I see in uh, whoever. NIP's game, I think if I'm playing them on Inferno, these are some of the weaknesses I've seen that I would try to exploit, some tendencies that could be exploited, right? And then he's the coach of the other team and he's saying, well, for Fnatic, you know, I think this is where it's easiest to attack them and then we present you. And if we're wrong, great. It makes for great content. It I makes mean, for great TV. You're saying, wow, actually they maybe were aware they did some self-scouting, they adjusted, or they just had plenty of time to add new things. Who knows, right? So uh, unfortunately, a lot of the times for us, it's like the lack of time yeah. to well, really be able to prepare some of this it's stuff. It's like when you guys go to watch demos, right? Like that that would be our time to create stuff. But the production stuff had already been working for 14 hours that day and we're not getting anybody to create an asset at 2 a.m. unfortunately. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, But I think that's where like we can maybe, for this one here at Pro League, if we work out a way that we want to be able to tell this story or go into a bit deeper analysis, that we can take some accountability. I can build some stuff. I can get Rush on the fucking phone. Like we can come up with some stuff here that can be fun. And I think that it would be really cool and we, we need to think of it now what we want to do but the way that we if, we if we can sort it out in this next week hopefully we can tell a story differently and we can give people some more information i would love especially this week coming up uh, sorry the playoff week coming up is when the players join us after their game win to have a bunch of rounds from the game that they could talk us through as key rounds sure because that's always fun to see in fact, especially when we had that simple talking through the electronic and him like mm. 2v5 or 2v4 on train that I was think, fucking great i think that's great content because you really get to see how the player thinks or is he even thinking with when he's playing in perfect information yeah as well. and so like you you will have an idea how this round plays out and you will just ask and then you're like then you as a analyst or a caster who say holy holy shit i thought it was completely different what he actually yeah. said yeah. so you don't say your opinion before but you actually listen to the play and like i didn't expect that at all compared to what we were presented and then you can relate that to to all the viewers you know that showcase you are wrong sometime as yeah. a caster oh we're wrong then, most of the time yeah but that's also <laughs> showcase like how you tell the story but how it actually unfolded you know sure so i i think the best way is to somehow create an, an intense storytelling um but it's obviously hard if you're playing the same team all the time. Yes. But in the same time, the the storyline is the same, but more intense, you know? Do you think it's... it's uh, so I'm going to deviate here for a moment. Do you think it's best with certain players, like Brokey, for example, if we were to talk to him, to talk to him at a computer with a game in front of him? Would you yeah, think... Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah? Like, <laughs> I, I think um, if you put him down and you say, like, can you explain the round? And he's on the server explaining and you recording that. I think yeah. that would be better than him... With a microphone like, in his face. Yeah. yeah. I, I think so. It becomes more like in front of the PC uh, because some players will like would not remember what was happening that round because yeah. that's what it has, happens when you're in the zone. You don't know what you felt or how you saw the round. You know, like you can only guessing after how you actually saw the round unfold. Well, you know, you're a fan of storylines, so <laughs> I'm going to change the lane here and, and ask you to tell your story. Your origin story. Oh, you of, well, we all know he was a nerdy computer kid. Of Finn Anderson. Yeah, no, he but wasn't what a people nerdy don't computer know, kid. man, is like when he I wasn't. was. We were sitting here the other night on our off day, like after we helped Henry move, we chilled at Chad's place, had some beers. We were playing like 1.6 frag movies, you know. On oh, that's the why I was doing the device podcast. <laughs> yeah, he was actually doing the, the podcast with device. We were just having a, a, a great time here. But, you know, Ruination, one of the most famous ones, there he is. Fit, there's Kerrigan <laughs> with the Deagle, right? Even way yeah, back then. And I know there's been the, you know, fanatic uh, days towards the end of 1.6. No one probably knows that you played with Mouse at the start, you know, of CSGO. We were shocked today to remember that after phase before Mouse, you were in Envy for that little <laughs> period of time. So tell yeah. us a little bit, man, how it all started for you when it comes to Counter-Strike and, you know. Yeah, I mean, 
just to go all the way back um i think in 2001 i got my pc and before that i played on my brother's pc Classic. and you were 11. 11 so since 2001 i have played counter-strike uh, very serious and uh, for me it was very strange to have uh, a 14 15 year old traveling around playing against sonic and, yeah, and right. all these players uh, on LAN and and suddenly it went really fast. I, I think um, I got sorry, but uh, at that time, did you like look up to them and yeah, you yeah. know MTW? Yeah. You were like, I wanna, I wanna I get have, theirs at some point. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was very structured. I think um, I I was really good at playing football when I was nine, ten years old. And um, what happened is I got two times same injury and in, inside my leg, so it meant I had six months break two times. Yeah. Um, and then I said, screw it, after second time, and I just went full in on CS and, and literally just did that and I'm on a university degree as well. Um, but what, like, let me ask you this, because I was watching Counter-Strike back when all this was mm -hmm. unfolding. What was, the, what was the team with Zonic at the time, the one that you, know, you were infatuated with? Was it the HPX, uh, yeah, MJE, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, before Sunday come in? Yeah, yeah. yeah with okay. Wimp as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before Sun and Ave joined, when Sun and Ave joined, it became... They were, I was already competing at a high level. Mm, okay. But when I was 15, I wasn't really. Um, when I was, I was like top 10 in Denmark, like in, in the teams. But in 2006, six seven, we started playing really good. What are you doing? Oh, you're adjusting. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little, I know it. Oh, you're yeah. paying attention I'm, I'm paying to attention the... Paying attention to yeah, yeah. the levels and... Boy, this should guy's, be the... <laughs> this should be the loudest for sure. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I want his engineer. word to get across. Yeah. But I think in 2008 was where I actually got a contract. And back then it was 400, 500 euros to play every month. Um, and at that point, it really took off. And then I, in my opinion, became one of the best players within two years uh, when I joined Mouse Sports. Well, you were a star player. Yeah. For people yeah. who <laughs> are unaware, yeah. you know, <laughs> Kerrigan was like a star I fragger. Really he was mental. He could op. He, could, he was one of those do-it-all, right? Yeah. Like you were a rifler. Or did you start yeah, as an op? I was a rifler, but I was but you, a hybrid. But you were very good with an yeah. op. You were a hybrid, exactly hybrid, and uh, your deagle was insane too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I made. I, I think the the problem one point six was that everybody thought I cheated for a long time <laughs> until I finally could come to land, like fifteen to sixteen years old, and in one point six it was like really close circuit. You like either you had friends, and I was very young. I was four or five years younger than the best players at that point, so I had to grind my own way with new teams. But once I came to Mouse Sports Fnatic, that's where I really could just evolve my game, playing with better players, because I always was the best player in my teams. So I could not, that was the most frustrating part, I could not become better and better, because I learned too slow from the players I played with. So I had to learn myself and from the demos of enemies. Mm. But the second I joined and played with better players, I became so good within two, three years and and it was pretty fun to play the Magalov, the Sonic, yeah, the, right. I played against Robon and mm -hmm. Get Right and Forrest. I played all these guys. And obviously the motivation last year was not that good. Um but yeah, I was coming to see us go. But you guys were the best team in the world at yeah, the end yeah. of one it was This is the Fnatic you, roster. You, right? yeah, it yeah, was Fnatic. Carrigan, Exist, Freeze, yeah. Trace Zipix or no? No, Zipnix, no Trace, Trace and and then we had Gooks, but then wow. Gooks went out. Then we Muddy? had Fjorde and yeah. Muddy ah, as well. Fjorde, yeah, yeah. We, had, we had some players. Exis went yeah, out Muddy and we kept yeah. playing, yeah. Yeah, and then we beat Navi. And I think we played six finals in a row against them. I was in Navi all the time. <laughs> yeah, and we won yeah. all, all six, so um, it was a pretty awesome time. But coming to CSGO, I was obviously very close to stop. Um, because like going from being one of the best players in the world to join a game and I could just not kill. I, it, it was it was so insane mentally. I think at this uh, my desk broke a few times at home. Like those <laughs> and two you were years what was, like twenty four, twenty three at the time or less. Must be right at 2000, 2013, right? Thirteen, right? So let's say twenty three. So 23. I was in my prime age and it, I got robbed. Yeah, you know, like yeah, <laughs> from right, where I wanted yeah, to be. Yeah, at. Yeah. So recurring thing for phase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, then I think the final offer came from TSM. I jumped to like eight different teams within two years like when you look at uh, Wikipedia I was it was saying then I joined TSM and back then I was like okay I play for half year see how it goes done my study I can finally go work like an adult <laughs> and then we win tournaments and we're the best team in the world I'm like yeah uh, I'll keep playing now you know <laughs> how happy are you that you didn't follow the traditional career path and become a uh, suit wearer and everyday office worker I think I'm very happy obviously where I am right now but also know that 
I invested so much in, in 1.6. And even if that would be the end and I would go on to work at 25 and as an adult, I'll be so proud that I followed that dream and did both at the same time, you know? So I've always been grateful. And that's also why I know, like, I have many opportunities on the other side of my, like, playing career. But, like, that's the thing I envy the most from myself compared to others. Like, I have many options because yeah. of what I've done with my brand, what I've done, the whole... You've got that security. Career. I have security and also university degree and everything, you know, where the players who's 21 now drop out of everything, they have only Counter-Strike. Yeah. Exactly. That is so scary, dangerous, man. scary, yeah. you know? Like, uh, that's the thing people don't say at Plan B, and I agree, you know, you have to give your full in, but the second it actually doesn't work and you didn't save money. Let me ask this then. So let's say that tomorrow... Actually, no, let's not say tomorrow. That everything's going as it is going. Everything's the life is as it is right in this very moment. Is there any part of you that would ever go and work in a career that your degree has uh, facilitated or would you stay in esports for the rest of your time? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, I know one thing is said for sure. I want to try coaching and okay. I want to try for six months and then I decide is this a career path for me or not. Like there will be... Come join us, mind. man. We always need some more people on the traveling circus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's the only thing I've said. Like, I need. <laughs> well, lose my job. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Man. You can go back to coaching. <laughs> so, please. <laughs> no, but I think uh, I have three months off from everything. Have my agent collect everything, every opportunity uh, that I want to do, and I think with my degree, I can still do esports and use my degree. Okay. Which is fantastic. It's about the uh, economies and how yeah. you. Uh, drive a, a company basically right and that's esports so yeah i have a couple of questions for you so first is it one, about economics? i accept that but can you actually imagine yourself working a nine to five not right now right now no i i would not work nine to five i think i the way i've been doing my whole life is in motivation and overwork so if i go to work a nine to five job I will invest so much time to become the best. No, I, at that what? What I mean by that yeah. is like having an office job. Like, yeah, you put the extra yeah. hours, great. But you know, just like you, you go into that routine Monday, Friday, nine, nine to five, and of course you, you no. do over than that, that right? That, that would because be, for me, that would be a bigger goal for me if, if then it means I want to be the CEO of the company. Yeah. Like, I will not only just take the job. If I see, if I have to take that step to become what I want to be, do, you would, yes. You wouldn't have a problem yeah. doing it. But it's about the motivation because right now I'm, the much I have been working for like all year, all years is because of my motivation and my drive. And that's the only question I have once I'm stopping playing is like, how is my drive going to be for coach, for what I want to do? Because I know that has been my biggest strength my whole life is, is to drive and sacrifice everything to achieve that one thing. I think you'd make a great coach. That being said, definitely give me a <laughs> give me a ring. Uh, not because I can teach you some things, but probably tell you a couple of mind, minds mm. that you could uh, avoid. Like it's a different thing, but it's getting better with time. Yeah, you know, like like you were talking about the veterans are more. They came from team sports, so they're used about the team. But they're also in CS. They're not used to coaching, right? Mm. Like they might have. Of course, in football, you had a coach and you were used to that. But in CS, you're a veteran. You already achieved things. You're thinking, what? Someone's going to... I won doing what I wanted to do. Like, mm -hmm. I don't need someone telling me what to do. So, but the young guns are like now, they're expecting coaching, actually welcoming it. And they're yeah. more open to it. And that's a, that's a big difference. But another thing I wanted to ask you is basically, you know, how difficult was it for you at the time? And do you think you could do it like right now with the way the circuit is to get your master's not only bachelor's but master's degree and while competing you were competing you were in a trial, uh, tsm at the time or i think so yeah i mean yes or no i i think uh, the problem would be and that's um the like exams i would have uh, i think um the way it's built up in denmark in that um university degree i took you didn't have to be in in class. university in class okay. so how how my year looked like for like five years was basically um, the second there was no tournaments in Christmas, I was studying and reading everything because I wasn't in class for the whole year. So I would just read the books myself and go to the exam and do my best. But what eventually would happen, would I would have like four exams in January from the second January to the, the 20th, you know? Yep. And there was, when I joined TSM, I told like, if I have an exam, it's very hard for me to drop it 
uh, on because like what you have to do to drop an exam, you have to meet up, put a paper, and walk away, and then you can do the re-exam. But if you don't meet up, you oh. have to wait a half year, oh. and that means I will be very delayed. Wow. So one story from TSM when I joined them was when we were Dignitas, we qualified for the X Games Aspen. Mm. And that was in January, 15 January. And I went to exam the 4th uh, January. And it was like one of the hardest exams I, I, I had. Which then. subject? Um, it was mathematics on a high level. You ah, know? okay. When I didn't need to use it <laughs> that for is anything. Hard. But a bachelor. And I, I think it was mathematics. I went there. I only did 50% of my exam. And I already I went home. I looked. The re-exam is on the Aspen tournament. Oh and boy. I didn't tell my guys that um, <clears throat> I might miss out of the tournament. And I didn't want to tell them only did 50%. They asked, I said, they went all right. <laughs> and then I opened four days before Aspen tournament and I passed the exam. I was like, okay, the exam has been so hard that half of the guys like in the class couldn't even not finish yeah. the, the exam, you know? So, but that was very panicking, like not knowing if you have to play or not. And I had to tell the team, if I have an exam, I cannot go. But it would only be in June and and January. So doing it now would be very rough. But if you are very talented, one of the best players, you I think you could tell the organization this is important for me. Um, but I would not recommend it. Like it was very draining for for me um, because I knew every time the season was over, I had to go yeah. down and read Back to five work. books. Yeah, five books during my you know, break. So to finish off the point, I don't think so. I would be able to do it, but the the scheduling was tough as well in in one point one point six, but also CSGO because I made an exam. I went when we were in uh, Fnatic, we went to Taiwan and played CS online or mm. something. Then we went down there. I played a game Wednesday, traveled home Thursday to write a paper of eight pages, and then delivered Friday, and then <laughs> defended a few <laughs> hours later and traveled back. Saturday evening to Fuck China and play bro. CS, oh, right? That's insane. But the problem man. was when the exam started, I went to China. There's no Google. So I couldn't write <laughs> oh. the exam. So what happened was that when I went down there, I had to set to play because I could not use it. So when I was in the flight during those 10 hours, 11 hours from yeah. China, I wrote my exam. I was completely destroyed when I'm through and still passed. So I think, I think many of the things I did, I I think I would be so good with exams. If I wasn't hundred invested in my university degree, I think I would get really good uh, grades. But what I did was 50-50, you know? So I also think I could have been a better player in, in CSGO if I didn't have my university degree because I would, in the beginning, I would have a lot mm -hmm. more time and a lot more focus. But where I am today, I'm super happy, you know? Like, there's nothing to regret. But it was very rough and I don't recommend anyone to, to do what I, what I did because it's tough on your mental health. Quit school, guys. <laughs> <laughs> quit, quit, quit school, <laughs> play Counter-Strike. Yeah. <laughs> It'll work out for everyone. Don't you worry I, about that. I have a, another question for you in a sense of, you know, right now people are, are talking a lot about, you know, are you potentially the greatest in-game leader ever? You know, up there with Glaive and stuff. But I, f I feel that for a good amount of your career, you were also underappreciated maybe by the community, probably by some of your teammates as well. I mean, I remember coming into phase uh, to coach and I'm in Lisbon and in the room with the guys and they're saying, oh, we're like, you know, Kerrigan's being removed, which was already rumored at the time. Yeah. And I was like trying my hardest to say, guys, please <laughs> keep this guy, right? Like, you know, we've talked a bit over the events and I knew you were like a smart guy and everything was fine. I felt like you needed like a bit of help really. And, you know, that, just that you know um and uh, but i also understood the players because if you lose trust mm. in that sense it's very hard to repair that and, yeah. and and build that back up but you know one of the things i think you're obviously a credibly smart guy about the game and outside of it and a great leader but i think something that i personally really love about you is your perseverance right like you've been through some tough moments like you you were also People are talking about, you know, you, you you bring a team to top one and you're really good for a little while, but then it fades away. So uh, talk to me a little bit about that 
you know, whole thing like face, things going really good. And then you go and then you go to even like a team like Envious, <laughs> right? And then you even go to Mouse, which is like you, ha- Hastro you sent deserve, a very large no, you, paycheck. You, de- you, de- okay. you imagine the size of that fucking check, bro? Okay, but even with Whoa. Mouse, like you it deserve, wasn't even man. In, oh, hi- really? in hindsight, <laughs> in hindsight, like people would say, yeah, but Mouse at the time had Rops and Frozen. Yeah, Rops <laughs> and Frozen now yeah. are not the Rops and Frozen that you had back then or Voxic or Chris J, right? So even at the time, it felt like wow, like you, you really wanted to play, so you sort of settled a little bit, right? Like you deserved stronger players, but eventually you made that work. So talk to me a little bit about all of that. I, I, think, I think my father's a big part of never giving up. I think uh, he always, like I played table tennis, the story, it's funny <laughs> story. Table tennis, you know, like I was eight well, he'll years play, old. He'll play the winner of our talent. Yeah, we I, should I get him play out for there. many years and have time. I guys, think you'd but, probably still win. So. But, <laughs> but he would wreck me. You know, he would, ne- he would just wreck me. Like, even his son, he would not give me a chance. And yeah. he would always, he would roll around on the grass trying to win the ball. And, like, my father is, like, 50, and he's doing everything to win. And every time he lost, there was a bad excuse. But still, <laughs> I like that mentality that he never gave up. And, and, like, I think I adopted that very early in that sense that if I go into something and I believe in myself, and, and that's where it has been tough in my career, when I started not to believe in myself, then it was really hard to be very like like trusting that vision that road that i wanted to go and that's what you see in my career that when i then dropped out from from the top is where a team would lose trust in me and, and then automatically i would lose trust in myself you know like mm-hmm. i would end up in a situation but then i would rebuild myself so every time in well, not a failure but every time i had a lesson learned mm-hmm. i i became a better version and like for me to realize that it's like when I came back to to face with Robin, Robin said I was a changed man. But literally, there's only two two or three years in my career where we didn't play together, meaning that he would see my mentality would be 200% stronger, 300% stronger. I he said you you are always in the zone now. Where in the in when you were in the zone in the old phase, you were really good, but when not, you struggled to find your way. So. I always try to figure out to learn something from every single situation. So when I went from Australia, it was like, okay, I have to listen a little more, like to my own vision and others' vision. I went to phase. I have to be a stronger leader. I cannot lose the, the training room. I cannot lose the players. I can disagree, but not lose them. Going to Mouse, I lose the players. I have to be a strong leader. The only way this team is going to succeed is me being very strong, very harsh, which has never done before with the teams I had. So, and then coming into phase, I knew I need a strong mentality now because this team is in a bad environment, bad two years of bad results, bad losses. So I think from every time I've gone somewhere, wow. I have to take a big lesson. A year and a half. When Yanko was there, it was all right. Yeah, yeah. but you know, like yeah. I came in and every, like the, the whole DNA of the team was gone. Nico, the star player, the best player in the team, the caller, the, the, the environment, every, everything, the mentality oh, was true. gone. Everything was like, it was a broken car. You know, like where Nico was the engine, he might have been the problem, whatever, but not a problem in that sense that he, he would bring everything in the team together. Sure. When he left, I had to start somewhere, but it was very tough to be that the same. That was like a brand new team. Like you had to rebuild from scratch. Yeah, that but team. how do you do that uh, when they all have like four different views of what was good, what was bad, you know? That's why you made yeah. that an extra change. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for me, that's like what I mean. Like I, I think there's always a lesson to learn, winning or losing. And I think that made me who I am today and why I'm so like have a broader perspective and more appreciation of life and where we are and what tournaments we're playing than I had in 2017. I didn't give a fuck. Ah. Like we lost Boston, like, oh, we're next major. Took me five years, six years to get to just to the major final again. Ah. And like putting that in perspective is like appreciate every moment. And when I made that it's interview about Katowice and not playing the sport deck, it's like telling people nothing is safe. Like yeah, I yeah. might not so play in sport deck. Yeah, again. it's not like you're you weren't like you no. know, people are you weren't insinuating you're exactly. gonna re- stop playing. It just but you can't take well, shit for I granted. I thought he was gonna stop playing. Actually. But that yeah, means I'm fucking <laughs> <trying to laughs> fuck you. <laughs> but good, that means like I appreciate playing in sport deck and uh, and the Cologne so much that every year it's a mile like getting to the playoff and by having that mentality that it might be your last. I give everything I have or else I'm gonna go crying in my pillow you know you got a pretty sick team now though i'll I'll, I'll say though you know a a quote i really like 
from a player in the NFL. He's a Hall of Fame player. And there was another guy who came onto his team. Fucking and, real and he, people sport, and, Yanko. And, and for he, fuck's sake. But listen, you, you will understand this, right? So he came into practice and he saw this guy who was like going insanely hard in practice, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was sweating. Like he, he's like, yo, man, like, why are you taking it? Like you're taking it harder than a game. You know, going harder than the game. And he said, what? Like, well, this is what we get. This is what I get paid for. Mm. I'd play the games for free. Oh, shit. <laughs> you yeah, know, okay. right? Yeah. Because like same yeah. thing, like if you were if yeah. you could just show up at the if you could play at the Spodek all the time or Lanxess mm. or the Royal Arena with the crowd, bro, you would do that just for the adrenaline and for yeah. the fun of it, right? Like, but to get to that stage, mm. that's why you need Fuck to you and your powerful mindsets, you <laughs> motherfuckers out there. Just let the slugs hey. like me keep being slugs. Yeah. Stop, stop. Just a video game. Just a video God game. God damn just it, man. Yeah, you know, nothing stop matters. flaunting yeah. all of that's this. That's why Greyhound lost the fucking pain. They shouldn't have lost the pain, man. <laughs> just like Rooster shouldn't have lost the Zero Zero Nation, man. It's so sad. How did they lose? Well, they were they won the T half. Twelve three, man. They still lost. It's so sad. <sighs> I was gonna ask I had a question for Carrigan here. Oh. It was a question that I was gonna answer. <laughs> so what is it? Well, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you will answer it because I. But I look at the the pickups, twists and rops, and I try and think which one is a bigger a bigger pickup. I think rops is like the icing on top of a very mm. beautiful cake, but I think twist is the fucking sponge in between that is so like moist and freshly baked that without it the cake would not taste the same. I think twists for his age and obviously he's very experienced. He's won a lot. I think he is, I don't think he's underrated. I think people rate him. But I think in terms of what he brings to your team, he is such a fucking valuable player. It's insane. Like, I rate this kid so highly. Like, not that I don't rate Rops, I obviously rate Rops very highly, but I think Twist is so integral to like FaZe Clan's identity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think when we decided, because we picked up Twist before I joined the team, and the team reached out to me, and, and in a sense, um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do and it's nothing to do with us. It was like looking at the team before I make a change because what happens is when I join team with FaZe, I agree to a budget to make t FaZe win major trophy. I agreed to a transfer budget that we could okay. use in case we needed to upgrade the team because I knew... So I if had you want me, you have to give me this budget so I can yeah. bring you trophies. So instead of asking for Which a is huge fucking salary... Brilliant. That's fucking sick. So is that part of the negotiation? So that's like how me and Robin can control the team and, and make team the That's best. That's fucking awesome. We, we have, mm -hmm. we have then good vision of what's going to happen with the team and what makes sense, you know? So using that as some transfer money to, to buy Trist instead of Kaby, because I still believe there's something left in Kaby, talking to him and, and being in that sense, but the teams really agreed on picking out Trist and I have talked with Trist and he really wanted to play with me, so it just made perfect sense to pick that up before I come into the team. So... It would still feel fresh, but I could still see cracks of the older team. So sure. to have Tris shine, it took a longer time and he got a lot of role positions. So what he's now, I think, is more important than the role he initially had when he joined. But right now he's a joke of the team. He's not a guy that's put in position in, in con and has to perform. But he's a player that has position to perform but he doesn't need to perform. Sure. And that's okay. a key difference for a player that I think if you're a star player and you have these roles, you have to perform. You have to have an input. But the roles you have, you need to have frags and connect on Mirage. If you don't have frags... You lose the round. Yeah, you lose the round. But on short, you can have 30 frags. If you have like, like Exile is moving right, peaking right, left and right on the right timing, but you can also have 10 frags and still win in the game easy. So my, my best thing about Trist is like he doesn't... He, does, he doesn't have the pressure to perform, but when he performs, he has a huge impact. And that's the same with Rain, right? So for me, that's why it's like very hard now to take Trist or anyone out of the team because the way we build it now, mm. that everybody has what I'm talking about, that prefer perfect um, freedom in the system sure. to be who they are and don't have the pressure. Like we talked about Broker earlier with him not moving everyone around uh, him too much but having everybody flourish in their role right right now and that's why you're spot on with Trist like Rops is the the transfer we made that made the most sense which is like how is he going to use him he comes from Liquid yeah. he was a support player 
he's kind of still supporting in phase, which is not. In it's my so opinion. crazy, like yeah. to have him defined as a support player. Yeah, but, but like, but, but that's how it is because yeah. he's playing some of these Joker roles. Where yeah, if you want to play passive, you're support. But if you play a little more aggressive, you're suddenly in every single action of the game. And yeah. that's what I'm talking with him. Sometimes he he obviously talks to me and like sometimes I have a little more impact and. There is room in the structure of how we play it for him to search impact. I can play more passive in some of the defaults, but I will not have him do it every single time. I sure. want him to have this joker role because that fits his pers- personality of like, I feel the game now. I don't feel the game now. Then we still have the normal structure. And by having that, he he's like growing into the role now, understanding, okay, when he has a game, he feels that he has the more freedom, but I cannot put him in a freedom role every single round because the structure would then be very bad for the whole team. Is it a tell then when we watch a phase game and you're trying to force all the openings? Like Mirage is a perfect example. Yeah. When you're just launching down mid plane behind the connector smoke, yeah. trying to find the space. Like, and you're having one of those games. Is that is that fair to say that that's a game where the other players aren't offering up solutions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes and no. That, that's the part of where I think my career, like the way I am, the way I see the game, the way I play is like, I will never take the space. If Rain says, I want to go connect I say, no, I go. Like if somebody takes that sniff to do that aggressive move, I will feel very good playing passive, having the all view, having the all end goal. I can see where the bomb is and I can understand all the utility. But if we're not aggressively enough taking back control, I don't feel I'm getting impact as a mid run caller. I'll take the space myself and then offer a call when I get the space. And by that, we have the opportunity to play very structured as a team or me as a, like a micromanage in the back. Sure. But also me as a, creating openings for us to get the free and freeze and but that's like that's why it's so unique what me and rain has is like he doesn't need to create space we can me and him can switch all the time so if rain has a good game i automatically with anyone knowing force a little back and let him take the feeling of the game but if rain is getting up three rounds in a row i rather want to get off and he can yeah. he can then close out the rounds better than i can but when i die early we lose some of that direction of the round but sometimes that's good and bad because when I die early, the direction of where we want to end all no is wrong. It's it. like, no, because it's very strange. Yeah. Like, th- there is a strange mi- mix of Brokey, Rubs, and Trist, how they want to end the round. We don't have a set secondary caller, which I think is very mm. unique in this team. It's like everybody is like feeling it out. We have some like set calls we do, like outsiders, sit and hold, or somebody has a gap, move around, understand the round. And that's where when I die early, that the, it, our game plan becomes very strange in that round than yeah. compared to when I'm calling and I'm controlling everything from the back. Now, I have like a very rudimentary sense of this. I used to do it a lot on Cobble when we used to play it. When I wanted to call like a contact A long, which is something that VP did a lot, I would be the first guy in because I wanted to control the pace at which we were searching for that long kill. It's like I expect him to play mm-hmm. 4B. I want to set the tone. If I send Aaron in first as that guy, I don't think he's going to have the same pace as me. He's going to clear a few more corners. Yeah. <laughs> which is good and bad. Yeah. Yes. The, pe- yeah. Yeah. the timing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing that's why you get away with it it's yeah. an in-game leader call it's like boys we're going to do this and you don't have to clear that corner yeah. and worst case ho- hopefully you get traded yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully yeah, you get hopefully. traded because if like in those situations cobble's a bad example because it's not in the map pool right now so not too many people mm-hmm. can relate to it but in that type of position if you were contacting long on cobble and you traded and you were at like matrix like stairs area or deeper and you made that kill they couldn't rotate in time. Mm. So even if you got traded, you would still probably just be able to isolate the mid player and take yeah. the site, right? So that contact call, it was fine if you died first. Yeah, like yeah. That's a lot. You're happy to trade that. I will give you my fucking life, boys. Mm. I will set the pace. I will die. Just close the round. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's always a balance with, this, with, with calling. I, it's obviously, if I have 0-10 uh, back in the days, I'll be harder to do high-risk calls, but like with time my mentality is like if i've in practice if you have zero frags you kind of like very intelligent but in an online game like in an online game but in on land game i don't really care as long as we close out the rounds or doing something right right because every duel i often take is not a 50 50 duel it's a 40 duel to me and a 60 to enemy and this guy's already better and in, individually than me yeah. so but the trade and the gap i will create by having that information or the trade on that guy would have bigger impact on the round overall. That's why I'm trying always to, okay. to balance when I can speed up and, and sometimes I'm hitting these shots. When I'm doing that, it, my calling becomes even better because then I can call around myself. And I feel like that's what I was so good in 1.6 as a secondary caller, understanding what to call and how much I can push myself in a round to call around myself. But 
I don't have that skill every single time, but I'm getting better and better. But unfortunately, all other players are getting better and better. I got a question for you. What's a better feeling? Calling a game and knowing that you're playing individually quite well. So you can call around like, and put yourself in positions to find that impact and not just have to call a perfect round. Or calling a perfect round where you don't have to do fucking anything. Like a perfect set piece <laughs> where every piece you utility is perfect. The flashes are on point and you just fucking bang, bang, we're in. They have to save. Or we, like what feels better? The set piece because that's all the hard work in front and I start smiling when and you practice, also just outsmarted the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like I will sometimes when do a set execute and there are three guys on the side and it's like not a good call, but him. you just smash them oh. like and you just know the enemies. I was blind, I was blind, I was blind. I'm like, that was a good set piece. You yeah. just know the enemies are like doing this uh, fair enough. Uh, yeah. like nothing we could do, you know? Where calling around myself is yeah, it feels good in my stomach, but as a brain, as my whole body, when, when an execute I created and calling the right time, doing a 13-13 round, and you're not only bidding by skill, but something you have planned and you yeah, have trained right. for three weeks. And you haven't trained going up mid on the phone or getting double entry, um, but that's something that part of the game and you love that as well. Yeah, no, I have that same feeling. I remember just making a couple calls and they work and you're just like, fuck, that yeah. was so It feels good. so good, man. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, even as a coach, like you take a time out and... <laughs> You see something. I had this, uh, for example, very early with 2019 Katowice Major. Like we're playing the go-through game against complexity, and it's 14-14 on cash, right? And what they did to us in the first half, they did like this two-way B execute, mm. right? And it was really good. Like I was the Stanis Law complexity. Like they were good at the time. So at 14-14, it's like a reset round. It's like fuck. It. It's like so. I call a fake of that. So I call, we're going to make it look like that and we're going to have three guys just run out door, right? And, you know, hopefully there's just one guy there we trade within the round. It worked perfectly and, you know, we won the, the game and like that just like, you feel like so yeah, right? fucking, it's like, like you it's crap. having like that uh, impact. It's like so nice and, you know, not all of them work out like that. <laughs> Some of them are like just, I've but had, the, I've had game losing calls too, right? But, it's fucking but the same with when i prepare like i remember when i came to mouse and and like the team started to see how i prepped i would basically against miba uh if the smoke came at a certain amount of time i would literally walk through smoke and ramp mirage going straight to titrus and looking down sandwich because that's what phelps were playing yeah and i'll start laughing because like that preparation yeah, that was so good feeling my my team is like rubs is like finishes walking out ramp and i didn't yeah. even tell the guys about this because <laughs> i wanted to die with my own prep yeah and and i think the same was e-league final against um astralis and we played cash mm. and they've only played two or three times and um, there was the a execute they did like a expo call it and in that round glaive was always spamming in in on mid towards connector mm. uh from mid and when he did that, there was an A Expo. So I called instant stack A when I saw that. <laughs> running with knife in the middle out of, like, I don't care about boost anything. We four guys say it's 14-14, <laughs> and we just wrecked them, and everybody's laughing in the ah. team. And then you know you have the game. And the guy's like, why the A? And then yeah. I, would, I would tell them after that, like, there was a huge gap in your uh, uh, guys. Yeah. You spammed only in that they execute exactly. and that's tendencies and i love that man i'm getting yeah. a little bit hard because <laughs> i remember this round and this was covid so you could still talk online mm -hmm. like before they introduced all the rule as a coach so we played actually it was the grand final against og for the new york online okay tournament, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah and mirage is the first map and i said to my team is like on their ct side if there's a late ramp smoke on mirage isa likes to play behind that smoke all the way to the right of the wall right oh, yeah. so if we're if we're you know if we made the call to go away we're still going a just maybe spam it as the smokes are flying right and we're coming and we're doing it and i don't know if hobby remembered on his own or maybe i said hey spam the smoke yeah. and someone spammed the smoke and we killed them <laughs> and we got into this and that was like a, a overtime game it's like a double triple overtime mm -hmm. it was the first map of a best of five kirby had a great game b side with you <laughs> helped out and we, we beat them 3-0 and another thing is I sound like, you know, I don't care, fuck it. But we, so we were losing on our city side. We were struggling on B, right? Like they were winning a lot of rounds on B. So around like whatever, 13, 11, 13, 12, we were half buying, maybe one save gun or something. So I take a timeout and I say to the guys, listen, 
we can't we can't go heavy B in the gun. You know, like you guys just have to like maybe suggested what they would do or not, but we can't try to take deep. I said like maybe send the upper to play double up, take deep B control, whatever. But I said this round, they're thinking I took a timeout to focus on B, right? Let's stack four A. We had one gun, Nico I think had a rifle. Mm -hmm. Let's do the triple boost, right? Like uh with a gun, with a smoke. And that's what they did. Like they did some like sort of faster thing A. Because they thought we were going to just be the KMA. We won, the, we won like a half by. Mm. We got to overtime. And that's like you look back and you're like, that those, those yeah. rounds like fucking feel I, good. When you make a, like a real yeah. difference. Because coaches, in my opinion, 95% of your job is before the game goes yeah, live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even more, right? Like it's about preparation and in practice and all of that stuff. You can have very little impact during the game because you're already supposed to be on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. So... Usually, if you th can think of something completely different than your in-game leader, that's like, whatever, you know. And I agree with you. Like, I always let my, uh, you know, Nico or Fallen could call something that I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, that's a terrible call. But at, I'm not gonna take a timeout <laughs> and cancel it because you know these guys are playing, they're feeling it, and he might be right or I might be right. Who yeah. knows? But if I, I know that if I take a timeout and overcall him yeah. and There's I'm wrong and yeah, he yeah, yeah, was yeah. right, yeah. that fucking kills him like and kills yeah. everyone like yeah. that. So I always used to say this, a bad call, quote unquote, when everyone believes in it, it's going to work out more than a good call if people are not yeah. sure about it and if they're doubting it, right? So always let the in-game leader have his thing, like momentum, always praise him while the game goes on and there's plenty of time after the game is over to look back, reevaluate things and, and figure it out. That's also mm -hmm. why I love to play with Rain. I think sometimes um, last season when <clears throat> we had some good T-sides, I'm calling good and the game plan, the anti strategy is working. And by being up 7-0, people automatically want to go more, more, do more duels. And, and in that sense, that happened a few times and Rain came to me like Finn, like, when we're getting up seven or eight zero, and I know you, you're calling so good, and people start doing a little more freedom and random stuff, you get out of it, and the enemies get momentum. Mm -hmm. And he tried like let Finn like he sometimes when when he I don't get to talk in freeze time. Everybody's like I want to peek here, I want to peek here. Hobi says let Finn call, <laughs> and it's like you know, <laughs> then, Viking voice. yeah, yeah, no, because he. But that's know, important, he, right? Yeah, that, that's because Crucial. I want the ideas. I want to have that because I always feel like. If somebody says, I'm going to go Ram and kill him, I'm like, I believe this guy. Yeah. 10 out of 10 is going to kill him. If I tell him to go kill Ram, he's like, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my philosophy, and that will bite me in the ass sometimes. And that's why I give a lot of freedom to players that sometimes they don't feel I do anything because they're getting the kills. But if I, when I said go B, another caller might not say anything, and yeah. then you lose the round, maybe, you know? Like, so it's just part of who I am. And I will not change that, but that's just the philosophy I see as the game. When somebody says, I want to do this, I believe him more. I believe well, him more than, yeah. yeah, I believe him more than myself. Yeah. Unless I'm like over calling, which I do may maybe one out of 50 times, say, no, we do this. I have this question for you, right? So I had three in-game leaders that I coached, Fallen, Nico, and Neo for a little while. And the, there's a stark difference between Nico and Fallen plus Neo. All three guys very smart about the game, great instinct, great feel for the game, right? But something that I'm sure you'll know is that Nico has no problem with saying, hey, no, we're doing my thing and like being mm -hmm. an authoritative figure, right? While Fallen and Neo, they're like more nice and like trying to, trying to accommodate everyone. And sometimes you, when someone suggests something, even though they feel like they have the better call, they like listen to that for mm -hmm. the sake of not wanting to make everyone mad. And actually, I think... With Fallen, especially during my time there, it was the I have one re uh, remark, you know, like one mm. thing I could criticize him about, and I told him this. I was like, "You need to be less nice, <laughs> really. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, you need to be more. You need to have a bit more of an attitude because you know best, man. Like, mm. believe me, you know fucking best what we need to do. Like, you understand the game, but like, you know, no one is close to you. Sometimes you have to be a cunt. Yes, you have to be, and yeah. you have to say like whatever. So. My question to you is, do you feel like maybe earlier in your career you were a little bit too nice and you yeah. realized at some point you can't accommodate people as much like you have to kind of push your own idea a yeah. bit more? Yes and no. I, I think my problem became in Australia. So I was like, yeah, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. And 
I could just feel a bomb building under me. So I just said, like, it's my my way now or we, we're done, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. By not be able to speaking and, like, I'm not sold on this idea how to do it. I, I don't know how to call this way, you know? Like, getting some help to go into phase and that that phase team was one of a kind. Like, playing with Olof, Guardian, Nico. My, my goal was just to make everyone happy because... It was very hard not everyone to be happy, you know, because there was an ego, but not a big ego. I don't know how to explain. There was ego in the team of not wanting to improve as a team. Mm. Like, I could not tell Olof how to play a spot better. I could not tell anyone in the team how to play better. I could yeah. not correct the mistake. What I could do is swaying the the negative to something positive. How we, Maybe I should have called something different. So I took a lot of responsibility that ended up killing myself in that team. Yeah, I lost so you literally, yeah, you you lost. literally cop- stopped calling mid-tournament of a major. Yeah, and that was basically because of a scenario where I said, uh, I know Navi, the way they played, they like to gamble in a four on five. And the situation was that I wanted to go B in the beginning and we didn't have A control and overpass. And I see they're smoking and I know the tendency is that now will be a perfect time for them to stack or they push B. Yes, there was something I said, there's 40 seconds left. I say, let's go A. And what I get in return is like someone saying in, in a very specific way, we don't have A control, but not a nice way. I even know who this is. Yeah. Without and, the, I don't know the story, no, no, but, but I know from being with and, some of these players who this is. And that me into said like, fuck, we can't go A. Where in my mind, just rush. If everyone's fuck rushing it, yeah. A now, and they are 4A, which is not possible. The way they pushed B, there was something fishy going on. That's the way Navi played. They pushed out, gamble behind this guy. We end up waiting out something, and we go B, and we just die, and we lose 16-13 or 16-14. And that moment when I wanted to do something, and somebody didn't even overcall me, but put like a seed That's in even my worse. Brain. What they did is even worse. It's the passive aggression. Passive aggression is the most annoying type of aggression. So if I would have confidence at that point, I would have said, I don't care, go A. Yeah, you know, yeah, but exactly. because I was too nice for so long time that I had to be on the nicest side because there was starting to be talks in the team and people talking behind backs and the way I know Robin, the way he talked to me already, there was some... You knew the seeds of doubt were there. There, there yeah. was some doubt everywhere, right? And I think nowadays I would... If I would be this situation now, I don't think I would play. I didn't enjoy playing anymore. I didn't enjoy being a caller. I wasn't the leader of the team anymore. But what you were saying you were doing was babysitting personalities to make them happy so they could perform at their best. Yeah. Right? So you were taking a sacrifice on what you knew as the fucking leader yeah. to deal with... No, that, but that's the that truth. Was, that was no, nice. true. Because you feel like you can... Uh, it feels like you can really relate to that. No, because he's, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's babysitting other fucking adults here so he doesn't upset them in a fucking video game. Like, Like... Like this here, that what we're talking about is, so everyone has decided before we get in the server, you're the smartest guy. That's why you're the in-game leader, right? We all agree. Yeah. We all that, agree. In that team, it was not possible for to be anyone. Was, everyone was the smartest. I, I, yeah, yeah, sure. That, I, that was the problem with that team because there was no, no one was like a Ronaldo or anything like that. I'm so much better. You know, they're not the symbol of Navi. Symbol knows best. Yeah. Navi. Like if you look at symbol is he, he's so clever. Yeah. You know, like as a caller, you have to listen to him. But in that team, I had to listen to everyone because Guardian was best over on the paper in a long time. Olof, best player in the world. Nico becoming the best player in the world. And Rain is just the loyal soldier, you know? Yeah. So for me, it just became really awkward over time. And by losing, there was only one way to look. That was towards the leader. Sure. Nobody took accountability. Nobody said, I didn't play enough this tournament. Nobody had accountability in that team. And that's something that maybe i should have tried to push more but also as a human being i would go against my principles and and how i see i would take so many fights with these players and i'm not a guy i take the fight if i feel it's worth it and i felt never it was never worth it in phase to discuss this round with the team because like everybody was so hang up on their vision of the game yeah and their vision was good that's the problem sure. it's not like the way all of played the situation or guardian played the situation is bad it makes sense but as a team we didn't play it like 
what I'm trying now is like we have different personality, different visions, but let's meet in this right chapter. Like most of the time we should do this. We are an international team. Yeah. We are working different. Like but back then it was impossible because the, the race was always the car was already dri- driving. Do you keep that fear though, right? Because that's the double edged sword of what the way that you're leading here. So you're still giving a lot of autonomy to mm-hmm. the but you just make I guess the difference here is you're making them the guys before were reading from their own personal book yeah. of Counter-Strike yeah. and you had to learn their personal book mm-hmm. of Counter-Strike to be able to call them into place. Now, yeah. you have, you, is it more like now everyone's reading from the Carrigan book of Counter-Strike and then applying that in their life how they see fit? I, I think they realize there is a system. I don't think the other players realize what system I have because we didn't go through a system. I created the system on the fly, on the way we played, how we playing as a team. Yeah. Where this team... I think they know how much I bring, like from like the way I'm leading, the way I'm handling personalities with, together with Rob and the way we are improving and the way we are structuring the team and everybody having a good role and, and something to say. Um, but obviously there's always some kind of fear, right? Like if I think fear is also good if you look at the right side, I have to work myself, I have to stay on top, I have to be the best leader I can because if not, then I might lose the team. Sure. But I also feel like I have learned a lot from, from the past. And if I feel like I'm losing the team, I would rather step down and let someone else handle it. I would not like force myself to try to gain that trust. Like that, that's for me, that is what, what you said before, like g- regaining trust. I don't have so long time left of my career that I have to gain so much trust again. You know, like if they lose trust in me, that's how it is. That's life. I, I felt that in my team. Yeah. But I, then that, yeah. that's just part of the game. Like you cannot... The same in football. You might have a great manager, but if the players don't trust the manager, what are you going to do? Yeah. But do you feel also that it's a little bit up to the players and that's what's happening now or has happened over the past couple of years to also be a little bit more mature and understand you're not perfect. Yeah. Like you're going to have a fucking day where for all your smarts and preparation and everything, Sometimes it you're going to have yeah. the yeah. wrong reads, right? Like the other other player, other in-game leaders may be in your head a little bit or mm-hmm. for whatever reason you have a sucky day and you will lose because of your bad calls. You will lose. You will lose maybe an important game mm-hmm. because of them. But that only makes you human. That doesn't make you bad at what you do. Same way you're going to lose a game because fucking Brokey has three kills maybe, you know, and yeah. your opera doesn't deliver impact or your stars, you know, or Rops is set up in a round, like everything's set up for him. It's a, you know, easy round to close out and he screws it up, mm. right? Like these things happen. And I'm sure you don't go in like, like Brokey, well, this guy's a fucking <laughs> shit opera. Like, I, I you know, think like, it comes back to what we talked earlier, accountability, right? Mm-hmm. I will take accountability. Like in, in the game against G2 on Ancient, I in Katowice where we're losing all these rounds I was getting really really tilted I could not kill anymore like but what I told myself is like after learning from the lessons is like okay I can play so shit in game but I have to call I have to stay strong I have to stay positive in the game even though every single round I went around the corner I it's knew I was dead, dead. Yeah. I knew I knew already that I'm not gonna win the duel yeah. but what I can do, the only way to survive this as a team and win this game is if I'm strong as, as a mental, as a leader. But after the game, obviously, I take, I take accountability. I, tilt, I am frustrated. I am tilled in game, but I'm not tilled in my brain. Yeah. Right, right, sure. right there is the difference that I'm, I understand that I need to create space right now because even if I'm trading the second guy, I don't trust right now that I can kill. So I run and run and run and run and we get the trade, but we don't close out the round. It, it gets even more frustrating. Yeah, I'm right. dying yeah. for, for whatever reason, but I know that's the best solution right now. And and that's accountability that I took accountability for not being my best, but I also ask accountability for us not closing the rounds. And the problem Nobody comes that. when you're taking accountability, but no one else is. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, it, it it's my, you feel my like, fault. wait, what? So this is like only me? Yeah. And you know that it's not true. Yeah. So then it creates this weird thing where like, okay, someone else is going to be honest Dude, here. Dude, it's, yeah. it's so fucked. Like, I don't know if you still do this now, but I'm like, when, when I play Pugs, I still default to the way that I would have done it. Like, I would, I'm looking at the money, okay? Even though I'm alive, I'm still looking at the money. Okay, if we lose this round, who the fuck is dropping who? Like, what's going to happen? Right? You know, I'm, work, I'm working it out. I'm working it out. And then we get a freeze time. Okay, you, you drop this guy a gun. Drop this guy a gun. Okay, do this. Drop me the smoke. I'm smoking this. You're taking this. We're doing this. Like, surely, it's not like that anymore. It can't be like that anymore, is it? You're not just fucking telling everybody what to do like that. No. no, but there is a structure. But the way I lead, like when it gets to the game, like I, I might have a game plan. And when the rounds, when the game started, I forgot everything about this paper. 
But it's like the way I look at anti thread now and the way I want to call is this is a template on the left side of me. This is not a this is not a solution of my problems. Listen, you're not going to follow this directly. No. no. Okay. But I have it's rounds. A reminder. It, it's a reminder, but also if I'm not in the zone, that that's what I thought out like when I played a lot in the beginning. I was like when I was in zone, I called so good when I was not. I didn't have anything, you know, like ah. the hell. So what I have now on my left side is like if I'm not seeing everything naturally in the game, I have a template like I prepared this round. I told everybody this round. We go this now. Nothing. I don't have to think about anything in this round. Everybody knows from A to C what's going to happen. But when I'm in the zone and when I'm playing the game, I feel way more natural to controlling the small stuff. But that's where I think I control the best because if I'm controlling a guy and I've never done this specific move before, it's not an anti strat. Meaning we are very hard to read. That we are going, we are walking through a smoke. We never do that in that scenario. Yeah, you know? okay. So that's how I feel like with, with having this on my left side template, I'm trying to approach that for everyone that when they're looking at an anti strat, this is a, an idea of how it's going to look. But when you approach it in the game, it's not sure it's going to be like that. But sometimes the template will be one to one to one. It's like preparing for an exam, you know? You read an old exam paper, how the exam was. You go in and it's one to one the same. You feel comfortable. Yeah. It's, when it's not, you need to realize that this was what you trained for was a template. We had this happen. I had this happen. I phys- because when we were playing the MOG Columbus Qualifier 2016, uh, we were playing Gambit on train. This is the one with Hooch and Dozier yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, we watched, we prepped, right? This is when it was starting to get a little bit more when the prep side of things mm-hmm. back in 2016. So we prepped, we prepped. We looked at this. We looked at the way they took Pop Dog. We looked at the way they took Ivy. We prepped for it. Azza, he was the Pop Dog player. They didn't do the same shit you watched in the demo. His brain just fucking fried. <laughs> yeah. Like He was like, we can't do this again. We can't do this again. We just have to play our own way. We just got to play our own game. Yeah. He's obviously evolved since then, right? We're now in 2023 and he's played in this mm-hmm. fucking semifinal of a major, I'm sure. But I remember that vividly at the time because the first time... I wasn't calling tempo-based momentum Chad Birchall mm. calling of what I thought would work. It was we were preparing for what the opponent was going to do yeah. and we were kind of like, and we got fucking owned by it because they didn't do what we watched in the demos. And it was like, oh shit, they didn't do this and we fucking, we lost. For me, for me, it's always been like, I don't need prep. I just need to be in the zone. Like that's my responsibility as a call. I need to, from the, the game starts, it doesn't matter if it's 3-0 um, or we're down 7-0. If I get in the zone, we win. That's how I see. I, when I'm in the zone, I'm the best caller in the world. That, that's what I'm telling myself. But when I'm not, I need some assistant. That could be Robin or it could be what I'm talking about. Yes. Template is like <clears throat> winning that round or winning that eco turns on the zone for me. Like Guess we you win really the place. Five, yeah. five zero because now I'm getting that extra energy and I see something now because of what happened. You know, like I, I see things, you know, in that sense that sometimes if you ask me after a game, why did you call this? And like sometimes people ask me there and I actually don't know why I called it. I like I I don't know why. Like why as why did I call A execute at thirteen thirteen? I have no idea. I just I spawned, I looked, looked at money, looked at solution, A execute. Yeah. And like people are asking like how is a caller, how are you thinking? And I think I've been in so many games, so many processes, my brain is telling me without telling me why I have to do it. This is the best I don't option. I don't even yeah. think about it, but when I sometimes analyze myself like it must have been because we went mid three rounds in a row and we won there and they adjusted. But when I made the call, I didn't like, we've been mid so many times now. now like, yeah, you don't have like the time, the dude. No, There's no. only 12, 20 seconds in freeze time. And God forbid you were alive towards the end yeah. of the round and you were Not playing. Always, were so, you just, <laughs> so you didn't have time, right? And all yeah. this stuff. But I love what you said because I've experienced this with Fallen, for example, mm-hmm. right? At the time I joined MIBR, Astralis was the top dog, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Everyone was trying to bring them down. And we had a couple of close series there, probably a couple of finals we should have won that we lost because of Classic. some dumb individual <laughs> mistakes like the Istanbul one. And we spent, me and Fallen, a lot of time going over our games, their game, trying to figure out the way to beat this team. This isn't the team with Tarek and Stewie, is yes, it? Yes, yes. Fuck yes, yes, yes. It's this team, right? Let me take a drink. And we did. And you know, I did, dude. I was overworking myself to death mm. because of my first coaching gig I was like I was sick after every other tournament yeah. you know but whatever and, and we had some good results we beat them somewhere it's going okay and then we play again. and Fallen just comes to me and says hey I figured it out now right like I know how to play against them I know how to call you don't need to do any of the prep okay that feels oh. kind of nice and I'm like well what 
should I do? He's like, I don't know, you know, like, but you, <laughs> just I mean, don't you, talk. You don't need to. <laughs> no, you you don't need to like watch their demo yeah. and tell me they're, you know, yeah. I know how I want to call against mm -hmm. them. And you just focus on maybe, like you said, like yeah. if, if we get really stuck, mm -hmm. what we could do potentially. And I know it was like train T side. That, man, it's like for me, that was one of my favorite things as a coach was seeing some of the players when they're in the zone. Mm -hmm. Like for Fallen, it was the calling sometimes, right? Like it just, it's like he has x-ray, yeah. right? And he knows what's going to happen. I'm sure you feel the same way mm -hmm. when you're in the zone when it comes to calling, but it can be stewy. Uh, sometimes as a player who you know takes in a lot of initiative and mm. is like the point man it can be someone like cold who's you know just a closer and how he sees like i remember first time with mabr a couple of times like going through some let's say uh, rounds with advantages that we lost where maybe you feel like he's playing too passive and then you hear the way he describes how the round should have gone you're like Yes, well, that makes them. That yeah. is that is the, the the highest percentage way to win this round, yeah. and you understand like there's a lot of middle ground. So, absolutely, like you know, for me it was hard. Just well, I'm just supposed to sit be behind and. Did you win the game? We did win that game. That was the hey. group. Uh, that was the group stage of ECS. Mm -hmm. We beat them, and then we met them in the final, and we lost to one, and it was like sixteen fourteen, and uh, it was the it was a recurring thing for everyone. A loves of a our, good sixteen fourteen. Yeah, we okay. lost two finals to them. We beat them once in a best one and once in that group stage game. So, is is Counter Strike too long, Finn? No, I, okay. I think here we uh, go. A, like a, as a man player, of the people, as a, as a player, I've game is going like this like i yeah. I, I think i tried this ml12 oh that was strange like yeah. there was so much buying where That's, did you try it uh, oh, there, there was, was one was tournament did a show match right what? show yeah, match yeah, yeah. yeah i think og was in that show match yeah. as well ah, we played yeah. as well yeah um okay. you did weird maps too there was like no, no 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 it was serious it was, maps i feel okay I'm I, not sure now because... Uh, well, there was two versions. I know there was one where there was fucking Tuscan in the mix. Yeah, was, um, Tuscan's yeah. always in the fucking mix. I know. I can't remember, but it was just trying it out. With MR12, it just felt like you had to buy. Um, a but lot more often. Yeah. And I think, yeah, if we give it opportunity, it's going to change. But also feel like I like this when it's 8-0 and you're coming back at 8-7. You know, like it's still the game is still alive. Um, so I think, yeah, I we see can what you're play less rounds and also think... It depends who's playing, right? When we're playing a practice, the practice can be 45 minutes if you're playing explosive Fuck team. <laughs> then when you play outside, it can be one hour. It's an hour. An, same, an average outsider's so, game feels like an hour and 20 minutes. It's to, to the best of three, right? When Navi outsiders played overpass, uh, like I can't remember what tournament was, the, the, the game was like one hour and 10 minutes, yeah. you know, 16, 13. You yeah. know? But like, hear me out, Finn, yeah. okay? So he's going to show you one C. He's going to show you one MR. I'll give you the pitch, okay? Here's the elevator pitch. MR15. Let's go back to your first stint with phase, right? There was before the economy changes, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, you're up 3-0. Hard reset. You you lose one round or you're down 3-0. You win one round. You lose the next one. You're at 1,400. It's miserable. You're mm -hmm. down 5-1 probably immediately, right? So you need those extra rounds. So you have like some proper buy gun yeah. rounds to work with, mm -hmm. right? But after the economy change, there's way more buy rounds so you have more opportunities yeah which what i which is why i think like the from mr15 to mr12 the economy change compensates for it that does. difference yeah. but i would add this change as well if you lose the pistol i would still leave the pistol round in but the loss bonus after losing is 2400 are we talking mr12 or MR mr12 okay mr12 you lose the pistol you get 2400 so you have to make the choice between buying with 2400 which is even for the ct is a much stronger buy like you can do yeah, yeah. different things right and you put like more eggs into that basket that you win the force buy or you just eco and even if you're ct you had 5300 plus frags so you're guaranteed an op you're guaranteed m force with utility and the worst you can start off by if you eco is two zero down and think, you need I 13 th rounds right compared to three zero when you need 16 that's the same yeah, but it also depends what you want to achieve with MR12 compared to MR15. You I want to achieve that the games are shorter. Okay. That's the only well, thing I want what, to what achieve. What is the average game now? The average game is anywhere from, I would say, 45 minutes no, to an hour. No, no. We don't have 45 minutes. Unless it's a 16-2 with phase beating rooster, right? A 16-2 from outsiders is still one hour long. Well, an outsider game is about an average, I would say, of an hour and 20 minutes. 
pronounce it. I, I think that's too much. But well, they use they use all the time out. I yeah. think fifty fifty five. I think fifty five minutes. You notice now that we're not exclusively on fucking. Uh, I was gonna say Facebook. That was like seven <laughs> years ago. Now that we're not exclusively on fucking Twitch, we don't have to have ad breaks before overtime. Yeah, yeah. It's so much nicer. Mm-hmm. It means but we can keep the excitement going. We save hate time. That. That oh. There's no, there's no breaks. Oh, I think I, I think I would recommend a break right after playing um, the, the last fifteen. Yeah, the last fifteen. So what I liked about P, uh, PGL the major was that there was actually no half time between yeah, the maps. It was bang, bang, bang. But it was that was a thirty second. So yeah. there's time to breathe, time to. But right now I haven't played a new all time, but it feels like it starts insta. Oh, so it does. the round is over. Basically, it restarts and you're yes, alive. Yes, it is. And I it feel like a, you, that, that's you're not, just coming. That's, you're coming back. You're winning the, the one on three, fifteen, fourteen, and who? It's all time now. You know, like you don't even get to process. I think so. three minutes. It's too long. But giving that thirty seconds for the team just to breathe and reset and go. You know, that's probably possible. We yeah. could do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, I think well, it was I the freeze time. I don't know if time. we can do that. Yeah. But Chad, sure. you can do anything. But Don't make me do. sound all powerful here. You are, okay? you're but the only but potent. I think, <laughs> but that's like what I liked about PGL was the 30 second between the halves because also three minutes there is a long time. Yes, I understand. You can just re- recommend mm. the pistol again. What we're doing, we have a good pep talk before you go into the half. So yes, no, up and down. But like, what you want to achieve with them at 12 and 15 would give you what 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That depends on how you see. The game, right? Yeah. So if, instead, it will be one hour instead of one hour, 10, 15 minutes. Is it? Is that <sighs> adding a lot? You know, I don't know. I guess this is something. This is this is the conversation, right? Because there's there's one way to want shorter games, but he's raising a good point here. How long should an optimal match of Counter Strike go then for? I can agree on stuff. Then no, it's then not. It's not a one map. It's a best of three, which takes for about four hours. A best of three takes about four hours now. If it goes three maps, that's a lot of time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't, listen, you can't cut down the breaks. They feel available short already. You're going to be yeah. to whatever for 10 minutes and you come back and you play again. Yeah. Here's so the thing. And that's where we breaks. juggle, Finn. Let's that's yeah. where we go. Yeah. 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 We only started because of, you know, because of hypothetically, because there were complaints that the games are too long. And sometimes they are. Like a day can go on, you know, two best of three days can go on for 10 hours. That feels a little bit like for people yeah. when they come to the arena, right? So how do you make it shorter? And I think... Anything you want to do, because there's a lot of saving nowadays, right? Because everyone's playing the percentages, mm. of course, and all that stuff. Back and, in my and, day, and, and, and you we can't, never And saved. you can't blame the teams, man. Like, I, I love it. Of course yeah. I would do the same. Like, playing to win the game. Whatever is the best way to do it. But, wouldn't, can, but now I see a problem. It's like, the saving would be less if you do M at 12. The saving would be less, meaning you're actually accelerating the schedule really fast now that the games might be. You might pay for a ticket well, and end in a situation where the grand final is done after one hour and 30 minutes. Well, no, I, I, I don't no? think it would be. That's why if I say... If it was the best of three, for my was the best of three, it would be. It yeah. would be. I, I would just like, like... that. That's what I mean. You accelerate. If there's less rounds, there's less saving. Depends on how confident you are in your... Other side that would as well, be, right? No? Like, in theory, there will be more rounds to build up your economy. But if it's okay, let me put it like this: if it's five five in M R twelve, yeah. or if it's a five five in M R fifteen, there's a big chance, a way bigger chance you go for it in M R twelve, and then you go in the M R fifteen. Yes. Meaning you have less saving, no matter how you put it. Yes, I agree. But, but there's more ramifications listen, then, right? All, all yeah. we're doing right then, now, then the this time. is all time theory crafting. Yeah. So that's why ideally, CSGO would put it in. As a mode, yeah. just add it all the short thing. We got MR9 add now. Something. We yeah. have shorties. Yeah, and put put MR12 and let's see how it goes. And I think yeah. for for let's say if uh, we play or relog or some third smaller tournament organizer, they want to make a tournament mm-hmm. with you guys, and also you don't want to spend too much time playing. Like you play the Rubet thing yeah. because you wanted to get something before Cologne. You do that, and even if you play it in MR12, you won't care, mm-hmm. right? But you you would see some cool stuff. You get some data. I think we'll need some data I think so, yeah. about it, right? Because my point is this: if 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 let's say our goal was if Val comes to say you guys need to find a way to make the game shorter, right? Mm. MR12 is way is more painless than reducing smoke time, than like t- then tampering with mechanism, you know yeah. uh, if you save yeah. you don't get as much money, uh, the bomb radius being even more, you know all this stuff like I that has that's the like the butter radius, that's yeah. like the butterfly effect. Yeah. You know, you're affecting so many things you're not even aware of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best not to touch it. Best way to do it, 
make it you need less rounds to yeah, to win sure. the game and i agree of course you're right like it's gonna you know you're not gonna save as much but you're still gonna save in a 3v5 because you have less even opportunities yeah, yeah. so you want to have a good round but you will go for more 3v3s yeah. which i don't think is a bad thing no 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 like, like it will just a team that goes for a lot yes and i love and yeah. i love you guys and you for guys it. in g2 yeah <laughs> That's we still it. believe there's always a chance <laughs> we can right? catch this round <laughs> yeah but it's like cool. i saw a round today yeah. from 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 Vexite, right like when when they were playing pain on the first map inferno. on inferno it yeah. was a 3v3 and he was close he even went back to drop the extra flash to his yeah, teammate yeah 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 that he was a flash. sick round he got flashed through the smoke and he hit like the players were buying he hit a great Spray Got transfer and they kill. won the round. Yep. And that's like, I, I said it in the cast, I was like, this is a perfect play because even if he dies, the two guys can save and mm. they're fine, right? But if they just wait and let the, the opponent's position in a 3v3 wherever they want and yeah. they don't have the information where they are, it's over. In yeah. today's Counter-Strike, it's over. So it's better for you to go for that sort of a, that's not even, you know, I don't even call it a high-risk play. It's a risky play, you yeah. know, but that flash is really powerful. You go in, he made a good play, he hit the shots, they won the round. It's awesome, right? And that's the stuff you want to see. And that's not even, you know, I don't want to see guys go for 2v5s. You know, you're not going to be in a 2v5, it's man. It's a chance. Like when, <laughs> <laughs> when the bomb is planted and all this stuff, right? Like you just can't, you know, you, you, you don't want to make people play dumb CS, right? Mm. But in those 50-50, you want to make it more valuable you would for prefer them. them to try than not try exactly yeah for the if we're going to dumb it down to yes. the most basic and we'd prefer them to try than not try mm. which i think is at the moment just a problem with the way that not a problem it's just what outsiders have put a focus on they are the team who have taken this and they have pushed the it to the, the absolute extreme will this be in forever no but mm. will there be teams who try and play this style yes do we understand why they play this style? And yeah that, is it entertaining no. And that's why I had a strong stance in Rio, man. Everyone who Don't still you followed, fucking talk about no, how you're predicting no, no, it. No, no, I'm not gonna say it's putting that. Putting half no, the people no, to sleep, I'm Yanko. Not, I'm not gonna say <laughs> that. I'm gonna say all the people who were still following the 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 previous narratives about them, which were true, they were playing too slow and they everything. They were playing faster. Were like just nature. repeating yeah. the old narratives. Yeah, Those yeah. people can go fuck themselves. And I showed a couple of examples in Rio mm. from a game against Fnatic, which they won 16-14. A couple of rounds which, which they saved that other teams would have went for. The gun that, you know, Norbert saves an AK, he drops it to Fame and the next round Fame gets a 3K with the AK. Yeah, like that's immediate impact. Yeah. And in the 14-14 round, no, like uh, 15, 13 for outsiders. It's a similar situation and it could go for it. They don't, they save an op, they give it to Jame and they don't have a great buy. It's like an op, two guns and two SMGs or pistols. And then Jame gets two entries with the op at 15, 14 and they win the game 16, 14. Like this, that's why they do it. That's why they do yeah, it and it works. Grind out. And not everything can do this, man. It's like it it's takes a very particular pretty, set of people. It's to pretty fucking yeah. sucky that you're like in a three v three and you're the closest guy to the site and you feel like you have timing, right? And you can you can go, you can get a kill, you can still win this round. And to go against your maybe instinct yeah, yeah, and be yeah. like, no, this is how we play, and we'll we'll try again next round, right? There was there was a round. Takes a lot of discipline because the Buster joined Cloud Nine, right? Oh, you spoke to me about this. Yeah, on Inferno. I have, yeah, I have never seen anything like this before. It's like Buster is going out halls first on T side. I think he gets a double kill. He gets a double kill in apps. His first reaction, go back. <laughs> Hobbit is turning around, looking at Buster and say, you have to go, bro. Buster looks at him, Hob jumps out apps, Orbs kills two guys. Oh, <laughs> no. And I'm just like, this is because of Buster's train. Get entry, fall back played around uh, yeah. down but as you, as you can just see Hobbit is not even taking the decision to go out he's turning around and telling Buster to go out <laughs> again and meanwhile the orb was like on long went to small pit and was I hate C and he killed two ah, guys yeah, jumping yeah, on that so if they just ran instantly on the instinct that's true, it then, that's the, then the round is but over that's yeah. just not being on the same page that's he, because he, if Buster, they both fall back it's good if they both run yeah, out but it's Buster good. from James fucking from school James of school, thought mate it's like two entries no 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 chill alright man but that's but like also that, has to that's be. a bit uh, brainwashed it, yeah it has they to were be. brainwashed they by James <laughs> Come on, it's a religion yeah but that's why I'm saying well, man that's why they weren't that's why they're still not a contender team and they yeah. weren't at Rio and they're not one of but the I'm, best teams. They're a really good wait, team. Wait, 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 wait. I want to ask you this. Do you think they're not a contender team or they're not a consistent threat to win con trophies on the trot? 
Because I, I think they're a contender team. I don't think they're a consistent contender I wanna team. I want to see how they do at playoffs here because what I could see from when they added Chiron, they lost some of those faster things because mm -hmm. it, they've and gone then, because they're doing and, the system yes, again. And to they're me, it feels like they again. have to introduce him to the system. Yeah. So that's why they're just focusing on him nailing the basics and then they'll bring Add the back fast, all fast those after. Things. Because yeah. why would they give up this, the style of play that won them the major? Yeah, I no, mean, I but here, here comes my problem. When I talked to the coach of uh, Destin from Outsiders, the way he described why they made the change was because if they made the change now, they're head of team in six months. That's how he they're described what? it. They are ahead, ahead of other teams changing six, eight months down the line. So this change was not based on where they were as a team, but where they want to be and what position they want to be in in one year. And I think that's a very high risk doing a change it's basically in in formula one when you're the best team mm. and then you're taking a young player because you want to be on top in two years and i think the team didn't even have chance to kind of defend who they are because they won the major and basically after he was out right yeah. for the for the new it year felt like he was and the way that he described it was that he said yeah basically you guys are going to change down the line like in in six months eight months one year if you're not performing and we are then in a driving seat to take over because what happens often in in what we always say in Disco when a team becomes the best everybody else is shit so when Navi became the best team in 2021 everyone else was shit everyone had to change but people competing with them in the beginning before they became the best but then they started dropping off because they could not beat Navi they had to change players so when Navi won the made in Stockholm there was only G2 and they were already wanting to change at that point yes, end of the yeah, year exactly so when we came everybody else was shit as well like that's what happens when you have the best team winning that everybody else is shit and they have to change so what they're doing basically now is like saying that there will be a team be ahead of that ahead of that so they will be the contender to let's say G2 now like because they will gamble we will change in four months if we don't win I so i think that's a high wow. that's, that is high that's, risk that's a very high risk but because I, where they were in my opinion they didn't need to change because they had a system and they played a little bit different than they, what they did with yekinda and now going back to a, a more safe system i think that made them worse now I, yes in i the, agree in the short term but i don't think that's i don't think they want to play the old way no, i think they just need the time to introduce him and i think what they just did is like listen I think they just felt this is a clear upgrade for us. Mm. He's definitely and a we, better mechanical and we just player. Need to, we just need to pull the trigger on this, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful because we just won the major. But we know in the long run, as you so said, this is the correct play. So depends Okay, the way but let's, let's frame it this way. Because what you're saying here is in this framing. We just won the major. We made this change. We bring in a guy who we know is mechanically better than the other guy. The period of time from when we win the major to when we play the next major is our training period. So right now we bring Chiron in. If we use your line of thought here, we train Chiron in our slow system. As soon as now we have that in place, before we go into the major and the major circuit, we come up with some faster players which are harder to counter. Harder, faster players as opposed to default, harder to counter. We bring those out with Chiron, who's fucking great mm. when he has to make quick decisions, and yeah, we bring that into he's our super playbook. super sharp, man. If that turns out to be the case, because I'm with you, they've gone back to boring, mm. fucking slow ass yeah. defaults. Dude, All the I'll, fast stuff is gone. It's I'm fucking. I understand, and I'll say it first. Like, yes, it's been it's been that old back. They've thing. gone back to the team that was like uh, just too easy to read. Yes. In my yeah. Yes. So if if Yanko's bang on here, which I can see, I can definitely see the place for that. If everyone's goal is to peak for the major, mm -hmm. right? Which I would assume most people want to win. Katowice a clone the major. Yeah. That's it, right? Everything else in the rear. We want to win pro league right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. The grand slam, yeah. mate. You can see that. You get, you've got you get you got Rio as well, right? And Dallas. Right. So you got so yeah. you got a fucking couple more cracks. Do it on the last one. Make it seem that you yeah. make it like. We knew we were going to win. We're going to wait until G2 gets two. I know, I, I know, no. <laughs> Listen, I know Nico was here and he said, if fucking FaZe wins it in Rio, <laughs> yeah. when we're not there, I'm going to be so mad because, you know, they have, yeah. like, you have to have Katowice or Cologne. Katowice, yeah. uh, Major or Cologne. Yeah, yeah, yeah ESL, ESL Major. major. Yeah. Yeah. Right. ESL Major? And ESL yeah, ESL major. Ah, only oh, ESL Major. Oh. So we have one at all. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, I, I think for them, like, I can see it and listen for all the guys who were out there saying that their win at the major was a fluke they should be happy about the change because that's outsider i don't think outsiders think their win was a fluke but i think they understand that there's areas in which they could improve in mm. and they saw a chance to do that and they did it in time compared to someone and i hate I myself for bringing this team up 
But compared to someone like Fury, who had a good run at the major, but that was maybe because of circumstance, and that Mm. team maybe needed a change regardless of what happened at the major, and that bought them more time, and, you know, we'll see what what happens. What about this, Janko? I've thought of it. What about Big Yuzera? Right, he's doing a good good job in game leading pain. He's been in game leading for like a month and a half. It doesn't matter. He's doing a good job. Let's get Big Yuzera. Let's get Big Yuzera in the team. He's our man. He's the in game leader. We got Big Yuzera as the in game leader. Right? Are you with me? I don't want to talk about Fury, oh, man. It's man, like... I wanted to build a dream Brazilian team with Big Yuzera as the in game leader. <laughs> no one saw it coming. You didn't see it coming. I no know. one knew it was coming. You know, you know what's funny? Like some people shared my sentiment about Furia, like from personalities or talent or whoever at the start of the year or. After their fail at Katowice. But you could go back, Chad, a year ago, so two seasons ago of Pro League. And I'm standing there, and I'm saying the same thing. I'm, yeah. I'm calling Art out. At that point, the same. And nothing changed it's last a new year. fucking draft 5GG N- article. Not, right nothing changed for them that year. And, you know, like, it's just as simple as that. Uh, if the goal is to win, fucking yeah, no, That's true. That's true. The goal is to win. And yeah, well, Vince, not here. We've been going for an hour and 38 minutes. What are we going to do? Two hours at the least. Two hours? Yeah, but we'll see. Like he's Why, just... sorry, we've been going for two hours and 38 minutes. Yeah, for sure. We'll tell him that yeah. he's like, yeah. We'll see. Just be quiet. Let's just keep going. Pretend that we don't know. Yeah. Okay. So should we try and wrap it up in like, I don't know, 20, 22 minutes time? Yeah, but we don't even have to. If we feel like we run out of topics, then. Okay. But we could be here all night. And yeah, I mean, after that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll make it sure was, I get the video uploaded on this, so don't worry about that. It was, uh, who could say, but um, yeah. Yeah, Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike. Man. They're only on their third series. You see that? The Greyhound game yeah. went three maps. I don't know how we got away with this, but I'm happy that you and me didn't have to stay throughout because we would never have time to Now do that podcast. it's gone this late, it feels like I left really early. Yeah, you feel like a little bit bad. But also there's people there, you there's know, people come in us, and, and you know, there was... If people are coming Lucy in came, early, like, before the, Lucy came during the first series, and she wasn't supposed to come until like the the end of the first series. No, the maybe. start, the like oh, the, the second of the map, second of, the second map of the second series. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. It's, You know, if people are there early, we're gonna, we're gonna use them. It's not, a, you know, we're just we're just doing our yeah, thing. Yeah, you like using people, Chad. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. I don't. I. What did you think of my bathroom facilities, Finn? Fantastic, fantastic. No, yeah, thank you very much. You know, I'm so fucking brainwashed that. Tonight, when I went to take a piss the first time, like after I was done, I pulled the toilet seat. Wait, down. in here? Yes. Were you brainwashed by your girlfriend? No, no, because it's just how I am. I'm a nice guy, Chad. You don't have to put the toilet seat down here. Leave it up. I know, and that's I the second time. It down the second yeah. and the third time I went in, I just left it up like a fucking <laughs> man. Hey, I live here alone, ninety-five percent of the time. I got one place here for piss and one place for shitting. I got two showers. That's, that's fucking amazing. I got amazing. fucking four yeah, beds. Yeah, this is like you told me. This is your guest toilet and there's a shower in there. Like, yeah, it's a bath and a shower. It's, it's, everything's popping off in there, man. Do whatever you want. When I went in there, I had one crazy thing happen. And this happens to guys every now and again. I'm sure people at home can relate. I don't want to see if the two of you gentlemen can relate with this. Sometimes when you take a piss, you get split stream. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Why? Usually when you you're know, hard. Well, yeah, that does. Yeah, but that's because. That's the Superman but, piss. Like you have to, you know. I wasn't hard. I don't know what was br- blocking did you the urethra. Close before it. Yeah, what I did was I got home and I jerked off just before you guys came. I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> fucking Yanko and Kara are gonna come in. I, 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 I didn't catch the part like when you took a piss, so I thought sometimes well, it gets clogged <laughs> up by no, no, you're saying sperm, there's so. stuff in the urethra, and you get different trajectories, and then you get a bit of a mess, and that's not what anybody wants. Just aim better. Yeah, well, aim higher. <laughs> like him simple said, uh, he's right though. He, most people should aim higher. He's re- he is actually right. If most people aim a little bit higher, that'd be all right. I fucking without a doubt, without a doubt here. Uh, Finn, source two, uh, tell us all about it. Yeah, I mean, it's coming out <laughs> at some point. That. that was my version of a stunner. <laughs> ah, That's what okay. stunner does. He w- yeah. he will stand you right in front of the bus mm-hmm. as he as you think you're cr- he's crossing the road with you, and yeah. then go, oh, guess what? The bus is coming to hit you right now. <laughs> now I, I, there have been a lot of rumors about that, right? We've seen a lot of stuff with that. It's, we're, and we're not going to leave. We're not going to keep you for too much longer, Finn. We've already kept you for a significant amount of time. I hope you've been enjoying the conversation. Yes, of course. Yeah, talking to us. Yeah. Drinking a lot of water. <laughs> You're very hydrated. Yeah. yeah. Now, we did offer you beer. I want yeah, the people yeah. at home to be familiar with that, but you have a match tomorrow, which you're taking yeah. very seriously. Yes. Against Vitality. Yeah, it would be nice to be first in corner. Yeah, I, I have this question for you as oh. well. It better be about ESL Pro League. Don't call it Pro League or I'm going to find you. <laughs> yeah, it is about uh, Electronic Sports League Pro League. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> no, if they really want to go ham at it. <laughs> accurate, um, accurate. But this is the question, right? Uh, obviously, uh, Nico was here, and something that uh, we talk about on the desk is like the atmosphere, the energy in the team, right? How it's really good. And, you know, you guys had a pretty bad 2021, but it felt like the best thing that you've done through that year is like you built like a camaraderie, like a bond. Mm -hmm. Like you, you understood, you understood how you needed to play, and you got to know the players, and you f you formed the bond. And I feel like even when Robs came in, that continued and evolved, and that's why you were able to have those comeback wins and you know success. And that's for any championship level team, you have to have that. Mm -hmm. No team that was the best in the world just blew people out yeah. all the time and played from ahead, right? A lot of it is comeback wins and all that stuff. And Nico was here when we were talking about it, and, and you know he also understood uh, that you know n now in G two, like for them it happened after the Rio the RMR fail, mm -hmm. right? And they like all came together. They were everyone was honest, like they put everything out, and now they're like again also really bonded. They're playing good Counter Strike, and that's where they why they're dangerous heroic goes without saying, you know, yeah. with Cadian and all that stuff, and. I put Vitality at the start of last year in the same group, you know, like they make the change to come and they're playing with a lot of pressure and you can feel the pressure on them. They cut it with a knife. Yeah, as right. they're playing, right? So I was saying in the sense of like the fact that Jax is like a stand-in mm -hmm. for them is maybe the best thing that's happened to that team in a while because you, you know Jax, he's like a, you know, incredible human being, always fun to be. You can't be yeah. in a bad mood mm -hmm. around him. And I think that's going to help him to remember, man, like you need to have Fun. like yes this is serious business you're competing of course but you're, if you don't want to do it not just for yourself mm -hmm. but your teammates as well with how good people are today it's going to be very difficult to be the best or win tournaments yeah for me it just comes back to a basic question why did you guys play counter-strike what was the original idea when you sat down and why did you play counter-strike what was the what was the feeling it was fun yeah, yeah, I'm trying that. to think whether, whether I'm just trying no, to think. No, like before you even start thinking further ahead, what I want to achieve, just like why did you play Counter Strike? Why did you sit down and just get playing Counter Strike? I, I don't. For me, so after getting past that, I'm looking for something social to do, right? Because I was uh, I was thrown aside by my friend group at the time. Uh, this isn't my therapy session. We'll make <laughs> that in mind here. Uh, but I, it, it, the the idea of becoming better was addicting. Like you could see but the. You have that in everything else, right? There still has to be like from what I'm trying to get, and it's like we all played Counter Strike or we all played football because it was fun. Yeah. That there was like, you you don't sit down and play a game and you're like I'm gonna be become the best. No, at first you're like this is fun to play. I enjoy this. Now when all the fun starts to going out, then you have like I want to be better. I want to be the best now. Now it's fun and serious you know sure and that's what i mean like sometimes we as players we as humans forget what we're doing every day was because it's fun you yeah. know when you play video games video games is started because it's fun sure you know like it's fun to Thank play you. games like games is in seriousness everything is a game is fun it's supposed to be fun but with a series of like motivation and being the best and stuff like that so exactly what you talked about when we played Katowice we came from a boot camp there was one day and we come into Katowice and it's like you with no preparation Rob's uh, is not playing and everything is shit what what we can do now is to have fun yeah like just essentially enjoy playing enjoying this moment it is what it is you cannot sit and think what if what if what if just enjoy having fun and I think that fun we had so much until 4 a.m playing like it's land dudes we're playing retakes and giving each other names like uh, justin had si a silent warrior he's walking all the time on retakes the bomb is taking I'm down sure he loves somewhere. the shift key yeah yeah. yeah yeah so all that suddenly we just became friends playing land together in and then we went to the tournament and this fun we had during the night before the game was attached in the game where like some when i think about back on Katowice, it was so much fun like i've never had so much fun doing a one of the highest prestige tournaments, like that feeling of playing for the fun of it, 
Mm. And then go suddenly we're playing Gambit, we're winning 2 0, and like, I don't know how, with a stand in instead of Rain this time. And then we play Heroic, who's playing great CS at that point, winning 2 0. And then we are in the final, and G2 picks another map, like, instead of Angel New, I'm like, this is fun, actually. This is <laughs> if we, the only way we're going to win is 3 0, but now everything's lined up, you know? So when I think about that tournament, it's all about you cannot always have fun. But you can enjoy the of moment course. where it's fun and enjoyable to play CS. Because now when I was one month from practicing all the time, it was not as fun, you know, like as traveling and competing. But you have to enjoy those moments. And that's what D2 do, do, do right now. Like they're so comfortable. They're so confident. Everybody's dying for each other. Everybody's working hard. Because at some point, one guy is frustrated about something. And this fun turns into something less fun and the... And, uh, the composure of the team is changing a bit. That's where you have to be really aware. And that's what happens to us. We had a lot of fun winning, believing, every single situation we believe. Like, we still believe, but not 1% uh, as much as we did last sure, year, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, that 1%, that's what I'm talking about. That 1% of everything in your game is why you're losing because the, it's the comp competition is so hard right now. So I, 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 guess, I guess this is the thing. When you get to achieve what you've achieved, especially the first six months of last year, right, being mega successful and nobody could touch you guys, does it become the point of, right, we've already spoken about this, like the hunger dies, but the hunger for all, most of the players in your team at that point, of, you've already achieved, a, most of you have already achieved an awful lot, mm -hmm. right? So I imagine that the hunger doesn't get dulled in the same way. You still want to compete for the same reasons, but you're already the best, right? We always talk about having the target on your back and teams are aiming for you, mm -hmm. but like, and teams are studying more and they're looking at you more. So what's, what's, what's the difference? Is it other teams getting better? Is it, is it you guys not having that 1% that you're talking about in different areas, which is like keeping you from being like a dominant era team? Is it harder now to be a dominant era team than when Astralis had it? Like, you know, because most people compare any team, any team from the future will be compared to Astralis. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. So, What's what's the difference between your team now and it's like achievements? Yes, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I think th that's the when when I watch like tennis and other stuff, you know, like that's one single mind attached to what they want to achieve and the goal and the mentality, right? So uh, Djokovic, for example, like how he can keep winning but still stay the same. But when you're a team, it's not if just one guy loses five percent of his motivation because of the the winning and we all humans we cannot always be 100% motivated Djokovic cannot always win every single tournament but he can win when he wants like peaking and like, going in you know like and when you're a team if one guy's falling off 5% which is gonna happen like I've gonna be 5% less motivated for a tournament in the near future for sure that's gonna happen then if somebody's not on the extra motivation then the team is dropping in percent in 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 like um, performance and, okay, and that's what I mean. Like when you are as a team, I can talk for myself that I felt like I worked even harder when we were the number one because I knew what was ahead of us. I knew that what would be coming for us. Like everybody would copy every, every single demo. I had to create new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. But I do that all the time, even winning or losing. So by other players, maybe they drop two percent, and that could be the issue and and why it's hard to stay on top. And I think having a sports psychologist helped Astralis to constantly have a new goal, but in the end, there's no more, like, it's hard to push the limit. After four majors, it's but probably it's like, like, hey. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's true, but there's one thing that does go your way, and that's, during that time, you get, there's a fear factor. Mm. Uh, Joe right. Rogan, he's yeah. made an appearance here this evening. Oh, really? I, well, he yeah. was the host of Fear uh, Factor. Sorry, I, uh, you know, but it's like, when, you know, there was a legitimate feeling when you go into a game against Astralis, it's like, oh shit, it's a Shralis. Yeah. So at the start, like you, you lose some percentage, of course, with that, but there's something that you're not even aware of at the time when you're number one that actually other teams are like, oh shit. Like, no, I'm always aware of it. It's so funny. Like, yeah. because Rups, uh, when he joined and we won these tournaments and he's like in practice and in a professional game, he's like, like, everybody's playing with fear. And yeah. I, I remember the same thing we had in phase that once you are the best and once the way you play, you can just feel it in the server. There's something, but you also know it's like when somebody bites your leg off, everybody's coming for you now. Yes. Nobody fears you anymore. You don't clutch every round. You don't win every single comeback. And suddenly that fear that you had, so it's not like necessarily us becoming worse, but if you're 1% worse and they can smell blood and they are 2% 
believe more in themselves. Suddenly, that's the three percent we talked about. Why we're winning sixteen fourteen and not losing sure, sixteen okay, fourteen. Yeah, yeah. That's like because there's no team that's so dominant. Like in every single, they win everything sixteen six. No, yeah. one tournament maybe, but nobody won so many tournaments where they were super. Mm dominate no it's actually the opposite yeah like it's the fact that this team beats you 16 12 16 mm. 16 12 or closer every time yeah that's the worst feeling man mm. it's like you're always close but they always find a way to beat yeah. you they're always just a little bit better that's like what's so frustrating but i think those uh psychology like games are a big part of it like i'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying this but when i first joined MAPR, right? And I was like new to it and you the couldn't rivalries speak or Brazilian. whatever. <laughs> no, it's not that. But when we played Astralis in the game and I felt like, you know, obviously Astralis at the time was a top dog and I felt like we needed a lot of work to be competitive when it came to them. And we had a sort of a, let's say it was a best of three, I think, at Stockholm. And we picked the first map and the start of it was called, we picked overpass, we were T-side, you know, we were maybe 4-3 up as T or the game was... A little bit close at that time, but still a lot of Counter-Strike to be played. They took like three timeouts in the first eight rounds. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's a little bit strange. Like They're really like, not stressing, but they're really putting a lot of emphasis on these rounds and value. And then it's like later when I was thinking about it, like, why did that happen? And, it, you know, it hit my mind. It's like, well, these guys were a year ago. They were getting owned all the time by Fallen and Cold and Fur, yeah. right? So they're thinking maybe this new team is like our biggest content whatever you know i'm just mm -hmm. like bullshitting now but it's you, and, and that's why they approach it in that way and you're like this is for like people to understand the perception of the your opponent like has a, a big factor. deal yeah, is yeah. a huge factor into how the game in itself on the server unfolds yeah yeah okay sure. let me ask a question then finn what's your perception of these two t teams on the screen right now i imagine they don't strike too much heart, uh, fear into the heart of uh, for all the listeners it's og and nip good job yanka yeah. i imagine I'm those two names don't strike too much fear i'm very confused with nip i mean obviously everything is thrown in the air for the last two years for nip let's be honest right mm -hmm. but um the guy coming out saying they want to win the major and then one yeah. week later, Hampu is out of the lineup. That's also a huge pressure from the organization saying, this is yes. the time, and this is very I dangerous. You, and then what I feel like now when we played them is they have insane players. Yeah, a very talented piece players. Piece for piece for piece, I think everything of that player could be in a top five team. There's a lot of firepower team. on that There's team. so much firepower. When we played them, I like, didn't feel like... Yeah. like if you remove the names... Of the players, I would not guess who the, who it was because tactically, I think we outplayed them. Like it was a tough game for them, but they should always shoot their way back into the rounds, mm. and that didn't happen. And it was not like we went full ham, but everybody in our team played good, you know. Like, but there was no one like challenging us. It so was that's single the, digits both rounds. Yeah, both that's maps, why it right? felt very like, strange. Like when I rewatched the game, it just felt like they literally didn't have a chance in that sense. Like. Um, so for me, it's very strange. So OG, I mean, obviously, losing Dexter is a big part. It's like 50% of that team. I was at Dexter is like 25. But Nexus, what he have done with that team is 50% of, of his mm. uh, personality and the way he leads. And I, I think I see all the players now, they're not believing. Where I feel like when they played OG for the last few months, you actually, they believe they're top five team in the world. The way they play, they play with confidence. And I Which mean, is half of the game. Yeah, <laughs> and now they're not playing with anything. Like, and that's yeah. obviously. But NIP is a huge disappointment, even though they need time. But just like in the server, I, I don't, I don't see them. I don't see the, the player of the name. Sure. That's the biggest worry yeah, for there's me. There's no that's identity no, there. No, the identity of the team is gone. They have to figure that out. Yeah. But the player's identity, the player nicknames. When you meet Config in a duel, you meet. You expect them to fuck you Brolin. up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is like one of the most experienced young players we have yeah like that's true age, i don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. how old is like frozen yeah yeah same. like and he's won mvps and won the big trophies and you know top 22 yeah. let me check how old brolin is yeah no you, you know i'll tell you something man. you know Fro you know mouse has three academy play brolin's 20 20 yeah same as frozen like, yeah you know fucking baby bro. there's three academy <laughs> players on mouse yeah okay frozen is younger than two of them yeah that's right? just, uh, Isn't that's that insane? Stupid, and you man. were on a team with him four years ago. That's mm -hmm. fucking right? crazy. And he was good already then. So that's sometimes for us, like as talent, when we're talking about that. these players, like sometimes yeah. you look at their age and you're like, wow, 
Twist is a great example. Twist is what, 22? 20, 20, 22, I think. 22 I don't think he could be older He's been around for five years from mm. Liquid. And even yeah. before that, he was in Misfits for like a year with Sean Gares. 23. So yeah, he, just, he uh, even got some like good experience playing other Sean Gares or whatever. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's the biggest problem for me with NAP right now. The, the, the players are gone. Like they have to... I feel like they have to reinvent themselves, but like the players. I wanted to I, I wanted to ask you another thing because you know you said G two and you, you emulate the same style. I think that's the that's the way you were. You can be a contender at Counter Strike. You have to be like that. A lot of default, but some spice in there. Yeah, some you need set to have calls, some so that in you're the not so that you're not predictable. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. And you your players need to win you games. Just right? to be clear, in, it's Phase G two heroic at the moment. No particular yes. order. Those are the three best teams in the world. Yes. Just to, just so everyone is was aware. And those Phase are three sure elite. didn't have the achievements as these other two teams, but, but the I play think, styles there. I think to be honest, man, the only thing that didn't make sense to me is the liquid loss. Yeah. Everything else. That, that's the only I one can, I'm like shaking my yeah, head the last three months. I, exactly. Because we actually played good. But also the last three months. But also but, sometimes shit games happen, yeah. weird games happen and that's it. So uh, this is what I was gonna ask you. Obviously, you know those teams play we play similar who do you look to sometimes for inspiration you know like everyone like that that's my point i think i hate to look at the number one team um i always hated that because when you look at the number one team you see everything in perfection you see mm. every decision is the right thing so that's why i looked eg demos because i'm 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 the other opposite side why they're not winning they must be working hard they must the, the, that, what not to do then? Yes. I, like, I want to yes. watch the demon see what are they doing wrong, just in, of interest. And then I'm seeing good stuff and I'm like, okay, we can actually. Use we can do that. this better than them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like they're winning rounds against heroic by doing this specific default. And then I looked heroic demons, but like, is that the problem with them? And then they wreck everyone. And like, okay, then the default they easy did with variation. I was like, okay, then we. Try that out next time. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I hate looking at number one. I rather want to look at number two You're to six. You're watching the Auroras uh, and Spirit two two Academies. Are, oh, yeah, no. and, then, <laughs> and then I always move from two to six and I move away from the top 20. Yeah. Because I think the ones that break into the top 20 is the ones with the best, the best ideas. Yes. So Eternal ah. Fire. I think I added seven Eternal Fire stuff from the last week. On all the maps. All on have. Anubis. No, no, on all the maps. <laughs> but some on Anubis as well. Like just to put in perspective because I feel... The ones that the gatekeepers to top 30 is keeping some of the teams out. And if you want to break in there, you need more than firepower. You need set execute Creativity. So then yeah. I look at the other ones as them who has good defaults, but needing that 2% to become the best. And so that's the one we are competing against. So I, didn't, I don't need to know number one because I know number one is going to drop the ball at some point. So yes. I need to beat all the round to be the only team that is all the time competing so against the one. I, so in that sense, I'm, I have that. Um, of the com our peers right now in the top and them coming up with some good stuff. Ah. I love that because, you know, you're not crazy. Fallen, when I joined MIBR, is like, oh, we need a pistol and he just opens uh, a 2D way to watch the game Shadow and if you want yeah fuck you, Chad. I was going to say, and if you want your name to be here <laughs> instead of some 2D thing, Refrag. Hit us up for a sponsorship. <laughs> Refrag. <laughs> but, uh, and he would, go in, he would thing, open like Skybox. the map that we're looking for uh, mm -hmm. rounds and he would look at like tier three teams yeah. right because he would say you know like g2 we were talking about g2 at Katowice and their pistol round win percentage all this shit the, and it's like you try to copy shot. their pistols what like they yeah. give a drop we, of p250 to nico yeah. and no, nico's going and don't nico worry about nico they've got jks finds, he's nico the best pistol player in the world and then jks wins a 1v3 or whatever yeah, yeah. like that's you you gain nothing from that yeah. if you're like trying to but tier three teams mm -hmm. like you said with worse players they have to come up with cool stuff to mm -hmm close that gap yeah. when they're playing a better team. So there's absolutely a ton of cool stuff to find in this tier two, tier three teams that then, and a lot of times, you know, you're also not going to copy it one for one. No, no, you're I've, gonna, I you're always gonna, make it better. You're, you're going to, yes. You're, That's yeah. how I feel. Of course. I, you, I you see change. something good, I make it perfect. Exactly. You, it. You, you make it fit your players yeah. and also you understand that, for example, EG, right? Their default, you said, like, it's pretty cool but when you have rain and twists <laughs> and broken and drops, then that shit's like on steroids, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And of course, with the endings that you have in mind for that sort of an opening, then it's like full circle yeah. and then it looks sick, right? So yeah, because the team was asking me, why are we having so much EG? I'm just saying, guys, they're actually not that bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we are just very cheap on utility. We don't waste too much. And then we have great yeah. open uh, ending situations. And, dude. 
when I joined the club. When I joined, when I joined Phase, Phase had like they called it N Faculty Smokes. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, dust two. The dust two yeah. smokes, Left right? And, right? and then there was like it's like a two smokes on the on the same area of the yeah, map. We were trying to make about. something happen. Right on that it was CT plus the left side of mid, so you deny vision from the window, window guy, yeah, yeah. And, you can and you can do whatever. It, you can and on cash, it. they had gambit smokes, yeah, yeah, at the time, right? So, but for me, I and faculty is hard to pronounce, mm -hmm. so I just used gambit smoke. Any co two smoke combination that we had that we would do something else would be like gambit smokes, let's yeah. do gambit smokes and then do this ending or that ending mm -hmm. or this ending, right? So that way it makes it. Well, that's Counter-Strike vernacular. Yeah, What exactly. you're talking about here is the thing that is not well, defined at all. Well, it's like he said, like, it's not the fact that, it's a, you know, he's not calling it, yes, he took it from EG, but don't worry about the name. Like, he could say, he could, yeah. now FaZe can call any default where they want to be greedy at taking map control without names, they can EG. call it EG yeah. because it's easy to say and everyone knows what it means and you do it, right? So it doesn't have to but be... But it's, it's a concept. Exactly. Right, exactly. But, that's, but, exactly. That's, but that's the whole point of, like, Counter-Strike yes. theory is it's But a lot of it's people don't really... Get that. No, because people don't fucking talk you, you remember? <laughs> you remember, like, I don't know, you probably haven't seen it, but James Vlog with Yakinder, maybe you did oh, because so it was good. on Reddit. It's so right? good. So he has English subtitles. So mm -hmm. they're talking, he's asking Yakinder about coming from a CIS team or their team to Liquid. And he's like, bro, their like, communication is like, not communication, but their names are so bad because they call every position. Like, they don't have names close for left, angles, close right? right. Like, oh, close left, uh, yeah. close right. He's like, what the fuck do you mean close right? Like we need to, you know, this is called like this, like yeah. you know, or a name of a player or something because it's a massive difference, as you know yourself, when someone tells you close right, yeah, but it can be, but there's this angle that everyone knows that people hold. Mm. And if you put a name to it and the player, yeah. it's not even about if the guy, of course, you know, from the time someone tells you he's there, he can the move. time you're peaking, he can move. But in your head, you have more confidence because you feel like you know exactly where he is. Yeah. And secondary in your head, you know he can move, but you know the time. What you his know, options yes, are. Yes, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. that's like you, like you said, you don't know why you call this. You didn't have time to compute everything, mm. but it makes sense. It's the same for this fight. Like yeah, he isn't communicated that he can move, but he understands when he tells him that that his teammate died from this angle, he automatically knows because of Timing, how far so. away he was where this opponent can be. Mm. And then he's running into that fucking duel, even if the spacing is bad mm. and the opponent has time to, you know, he still knows what yeah. fight. It's he's another one we get. want. Yeah. He knows and he's coming in with like and he feels he's got and he's gonna win the fight. And that's it, right? Like that's why. But that, it, that right there, it, it, first of all, bang on. Second of all, you should watch it because it's fucking good content. <laughs> it is really, it is really good. Like, yeah. it, it's just them. And also, you need to fucking, as a guy who tries to do content on the side, have to you know, you have to appreciate the guy who just won a fucking major and the thing he said in the winner interview <laughs> is subscribe to my YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah. Like, come on, man. I, I missed my chance though. Yeah, that's <laughs> you true. You have to win another one. Yeah, yeah, you have to now. Yeah. You went so selfless with the promo yeah, yeah. promotion, yeah. Uh, but we can get you. We, what we could do is when Karaganga is playing tomorrow, we could go there with a sign, and we could have like at you know youtube.com <laughs> yeah, slash at, you know we could really oh, get some now advertising. Chad, listen, Chance had an idea, so now you're definitely gonna like. We'll have a <laughs> we'll, put we'll have a whole segment in between about players who do content. Yes, that's a like, great idea. Karaganga's <laughs> YouTube channel is gonna be plugged in. Yeah, why not? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we could make some, st some stuff happen with <laughs> Yanko. Should we? Should we? Should we wrap this up? Yeah, I think it's good idea. I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't want to keep fine. him too yeah. long, man. Finn was very generous with his time. I yeah. told him two hours. <laughs> I know we're close to three hours, but <laughs> I also seen him. Uh, he, I didn't notice him looking at his watch, looking at his uh, Oh, you think he's phone. enjoyed his time? I think he's enjoyed his time, and yeah. I also think he's had... He's enjoyed enough. And he yeah. had almost his daily intake of water yeah. right here. I drink so much water, it's yeah. insane. He's also almost had 1.5 liters. Yeah. So How I much water do you drink when you play? Oh, too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if goes up, the one uh, from Katowice that was on my boundary two hours, man. I could feel my stomach like, exploding. <laughs> I was staying there for like two minutes Who and I had so much the... time to think about the round, what to do. Because <laughs> it was for, insane. I've never tried. Because for our listeners at home who might not be aware, the, the this is how advanced player management is in a way, let's say, that now in the game you can type dot request. Yeah, they bring and your stuff, right, whatever you water, want. Water, Coke mm. Zero, banana, and someone will come and bring it to you, yeah. right? Like, that's how much we've spoiled these guys. So who has the most diva requests in phase? Nobody, actually. I think uh, everybody's doing very... Uh, Respectful. I'm doing, I'm doing the old school way. I'm doing like this to admin. 
<laughs> and he's like, yo, can yeah. you just go and they, type? Don't they request. Actually, I think they actually know by now that I have four bottles and everybody else has one bottle next to the piece. They already know because, oh, really? I, drink, yeah, because I drink so much when I'm playing. That's oh. kind of cool. All right. Well, I want to say two things for the end. First of all, Finn, thank you very much for coming on and it's know. great that you're constantly hydrated yes yeah. Yeah. and I'm glad we covered I've that. had a lot of fun I think it was a great conversation mm -hmm. and also fuck you Chad whoa because okay. like for people who <laughs> look the at the fuck, video man? for people who look at the video right like oh. you will see a bunch of beers right here <laughs> right yeah and Chad's had yes. beers too but <laughs> once he finishes his own he puts it so the camera can't see it and even the one he's drinking you can't see it so it looks like yeah. I'm an alcoholic Finn is great at staying hydrated a Chad is like a camel who doesn't need to be hydrated. So I'm not an alcoholic. Thank you very much. And see you in the next episode. I had four beers, just to be clear. Yes. Finn, next time you have to drink. with Do you drink? Yeah, but not beer. Well, oh. We could have. Wait, what do you drink? Well, why? I have a game tomorrow, so no drinking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. All right. Because I could have done a gin and tonic. No, nah, it's oh. all right. Next See? time. Yeah. Yeah, next, next time. time. Next time. All right. this. It's sunny, so gin and tonic is good. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. for your time. No problem. Well, right. Say goodbye. Right. Peace. Bye.